Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Overwatch 2 Developer PvP live stream. I'm your host, Matt Mr. X, and throughout the stream, I'll be joined by some awesome content creators and developers from the Overwatch team as we learn more about Overwatch 2's PvP by watching some of these awesome maps in action played live. It's going to be an extremely exciting day. As uh, Aaron mentioned during the developer update, uh, everything you see today is work in progress, uh, but, you know, being able to see some of this stuff, you know, day in and day out, uh, it's truly awesome. Really excited for what the Overwatch team has to show for you guys today. So let's bring on some of my guests uh, throughout the day. Uh, I'll be joined by the members of the Overwatch dev team. It's Associate Art Director Dion Rogers, Lead Hero Designer Jeff Goodman, and Game Director Aaron Keller. How are you guys feeling today? Yeah, so much for having us. Yeah, no, uh, it, it's going to be exciting. Now, we've learned so much about the PvE aspect uh, of Overwatch 2. We've learned some stuff about, you know, PvP, you know, with uh, push, roll passives, uh, you know, new heroes. You saw Sojourn at BlizzCon Line. Uh, what else has gone into the development process for Overwatch 2's PvP? You're right. We've talked a lot about the story side of, of Overwatch 2 and the, the cooperative PvE experience that, that we've been working on. But the Overwatch team has also been hard at work on the PvP side of the game. We're making new features, new heroes, new maps, some of which we'll be playing today. And we've also been looking at the way PvP is played. Um, it, it's changed over time on, on the live game. And we'll talk about a lot of the changes that, that we want to be making and that we're currently making um, to PvP. But there's one in particular that I want to highlight right now uh, because it's substantial and I think it has a big impact on the way the entire team approaches PvP on Overwatch 2. And it's, it's also something that we're all really excited about. Overwatch has always been played with two teams of six players. Overwatch 2 will be played with two teams of five players consisting of two support, two DPS, and one tank. Right, I was gonna, I mean, my next question was gonna be like, okay, like, is roll queue still a thing? So we still have, we still have a breakdown across the board. It's, it's not completely open. So one tank, two DPS, two supports. Uh, what led you guys down the road to make this change? There are a lot of reasons for why we wanted to make this change. As I said earlier, Overwatch has, has changed over time. Um, we've, we've gone from having no hero limits at all in the game before launch. You could pick six Winstons if you wanted to for, for your team composition to having a hero limit. We ended up introducing a roll lock, um, over the course of the game. And we feel like this is the next step in the way that Overwatch ought to be played. If you think about it, there is a lot going on in an Overwatch map. It is incredibly fast paced. And we have always tried to make our combat easy to read and very understandable. And even with all of the work that we put into that, sometimes it's just hard to track what 11 other players are doing on the battlefield. Removing two of those simplifies everything and it allows players to understand everything that's happening around them and to be able to make better choices because of it. Um, this change obviously has a really big impact on tanks. Um, and we will get into some of the changes that, that we're making to tanks and, and to some of the other, some of the other roles in a bit, but tanks can be problematic. They, they're a DPS hero is simple. They're, they're shooting that, um, but, but a tank has abilities that can be noisy, um, or when stacked with other tanks. Can can cause problems for other teams to to try to to try to overcome and counter. Like and, and a great example of that is two main tanks on the field. Sometimes that can be very oppressive to another team. Um, I think with five with five players out there, there is a greater chance of of certain people being able to carry. Whether that's the tank on the team or some of the DPS, there's just one less player on the other team that you need to take care of. And each player now has the opportunity to have a larger individual impact on their own team. And we've we've tried a lot of different versions of this. Um, internally, we've tried a 4v4 format. We've tried a, a 
three DPS to support one tank format. We even early on in, in Overwatch development, we tried a 7v7 format of the game. Um, and we, we always had some problems with them. And this is the sort of thing that our, our lead hero designer, Jeff Goodman, has really run with. And I think he probably has a little, a little more he can say about it. Yeah, you forgot about the four DPS, one tank, one healer we ran one time. That was right. that yeah. was literally one play test. And it was that like, was one the, play test, and we yeah, swore like, we would never do it again. Almost cut out in the middle of that. Play never test. to be never to be spoken about again. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Jeff. I assume that uh, obviously you know changes to the tank role, but I assume there will be kind of like holistic changes overall, right? I think just changing the tanks, you probably need to rework some of the other stuff that goes on. Oh yeah, I mean this is a kind of change. So uh, that imp impacts like the huge part of the game, obviously. And it, um, that's the thing about sort of hero design and hero balance is like, it's sort of easy in some sense, well, it's easy, but it, it's certainly easier to make sort of a single hero change and, you know, maybe even like a hero rework like we've done in the past, but to change something so fundamental as, you know, there's only one tank allowed um, really kind of cascades into a lot of different questions and, and, and you know, uh, problems that demand answers. So, I mean, the obvious thing that comes up in people's mind probably immediately when we say this is, how does Roadhog work in a world where you could pick Reinhardt instead? Um, like, how do they, how is that a, um, an equivalent pick? So that's sort of our first question when we first were doing it too. Like, we like this 5v5 thing. It was super fun when we play tested it. That has, has a lot of promise, but okay, we have to solve a lot of problems if we go this way. Um, so that's sort of, why it sort of has led to this larger set of changes and there's a lot of other changes we'll talk about as well um but it, it definitely um cascades you know for example healing just healing you can kind of focus on one tank now and tanks are even beefier than they, than they are on live the individual tanks because this is one of them so we're now we're thinking well is it is it too good to just play like two main healers and dump healing in your tank and is it too hard to kill now and maybe healing is too good now and you know it's just it's it's but this is the time to do it. This is what we wanted to do with our watch too, is look at core things like this and make sure that the, where we want them to be. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a designer, but I think that like this is the first real opportunity you guys have had to reset. Like you couldn't just do this right. on the live game. Right. Uh, I, I think that's kind of like the, what I what I assume. Right. Is that this is like a holistic look at the game overall and like changes that you couldn't do on live because they're just so massive. Exactly. And like I said, there's other changes that go along with this as well um, that are also equally impactful. So it's sort of like we just like shook the ground underneath the game like really heavily and like all the pieces are kind of in disarray a little bit. So some of the heroes won't even be playable really by our, our, our playtesters here because um, they're either heroes we're already kind of looking at heavily, we plan on looking at heavily, so it's kind of not worth showing them in this context or ones that we haven't addressed yet, things like that. So um, that just sort of gives you context of like how big this kind of change is. Well, uh, I, I want to get right into the game. Uh, oh, I yeah. want to see it live. I'm sure the fans want to see it live after getting all this like info. Uh, the first map we're going to be showing you guys today is New York City. Uh, Dion, what kind of map is this? Um, New York is a hybrid map, so a brand new hybrid map for Overwatch 2. And there's a fun new payload for players to battle over. The world building team had a great time just creating this Overwatch depiction of New York. It's tons of neat, neat details and fun Easter eggs for the players to find. So I, I think it, it should be fun to take a look at this. Yeah, no, uh, I when you guys showed this at uh, BlizzCon Line, I was so excited. Obviously from New York uh, myself, would love to see the Midtown Tunnel go over uh, some of the adjustments that you guys have made uh, to it here uh, in, <laughs> in Overwatch 2. Uh, just. Yeah, just a, a beautiful map. I have to imagine this is one of the locales that you guys have been dying to do for a while. We've been wanting to. There's a lot of people on the team from New York or who have spent some part of their life there. So it's always been on the list and Overwatch 2 felt like the right time to do it. Yeah, and, uh, it, uh, and no short of Easter eggs, I would say. Uh, no. <laughs> I know uh, on some of these maps so far. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, get, get, get some love at the beginning. But uh, yeah, this will be our first real look at 5v5 uh mm -hmm. i've had the opportunity to like kind of watch some games like as they've kind of tested it out uh it it's it still keeps that overwatch you know fast-paced feel but it uh it doesn't have like the you know kind of the the clumped up chaos that you sometimes see of live i think it kind mm -hmm. of speaks to really what you were pointing to jeff is that when you have you know that one less 
tank in the equation, you can actually make the tanks more aggressive and more offensive. Uh, but it's also just kind of easier for the viewer and just people at home to track. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you'll see probably a lot of play here. One of the biggest things you'll notice, because there's less protection uh, from coming from tank players just to directly block bullets for the team, um, typically you will find a lot more play around the map corners, map angles, um, like often try, people going for cheeky flanks and stuff. Yeah, but Dion loves this. Yeah, <laughs> they get to use the environment uh, a lot more. It's a bit more tactical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Which is great. Um, so it kind of, you know, I, that was one of the first things that came out of our original playtesting, and we were just like, this is a really good direction. I mean, like I mentioned, there's like, you know, as a designer, you sort of have to look past the immediate like problems in front of you and like, okay, we could fix those. <laughs> like, I think we can address, uh, you know, some of the like tank imbalances and healing issues and all kinds of other stuff. But th at the heart of this, which is really cool, and so that's that's really what we've been focusing on and working through these problems. I think something that's really interesting about that too is that the gameplay is is more fluid than it was before. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. a, a lot of times in Overwatch, you get these these really hard battle lines that, that get drawn between the two teams. Um, and there's just less damage incoming. Um, and so you're able to kind of move around a little bit more. And um, you'll see it here. A lot of times um, the chokes aren't as hard of a space to, to get through. There's still a choke mm -hmm. in the map and you still have to work at it, but there can be a lot more like pushing through and, and pulling back on the choke. And it's something that, that I'm like personally, personally really excited about. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, how has uh, the 5v5 move affected map design? I feel like it kind of has to have a, a huge impact on you know, what you guys are able to do, create different, you know, speaking about like players being able to take more control of the game, right? You know, creating more flanking routes, you know, more opportunity for, you know, the, the Ash to go to the side, get a pick and open things up for a team. Yeah, there's a lot more opportunity um, for, for players to do that. Um, but at the same time, um, when, when you go for a flank, you're not leaving five players behind, you're leaving four <laughs> players behind. And so you, you kind of have to be weighing some of these decisions in your head. The game is just as strategic as it was before, um, if not more so because of the, the, the individual ability for players to have such a large impact on the match. Um, I think for map design, we've always been um, really careful to make spaces that feel good just for one hero. Um, and sometimes we might favor particular heroes in different areas. Um, but because of that, because we're able to, to make a space that kind of feels good for Reaper or a space that feels good for Farah, um, I think that we'll still be able to play 5v5 on all of the original catalog of Overwatch maps as well. <laughs> And right, that is a awesome payload, Dion. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we've always in in the artwork of the maps, we've always placed what we consider cover objects. It just feels now with the five v five, players will take advantage of that more. You know, even the previous maps, we we planned cover objects to help protect players. Now with five v five, they're even more effective. These 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 artistic choices. It's such a great point too, because we have started placing a little bit more cover in our maps. And if you go back mm -hmm. to some of the old maps, like if you look at King's Row, that middle section, that street section of King's Row, there's one piece of cover in that entire <laughs> section. Yes. It's just corners of buildings is what you're using. Yeah, no, that, that's a that's a great point. I think you can kind of see it here, even with uh, you know stuff like that. I know the taxis here in the streets. You know, you have the little kind of windows, the pillar to hide behind in the middle. Uh, there's a route through the subway. There's so many different kind of angles uh, you can take. Uh, something we saw uh, at BlizzCon Line was the uh, two fire strike charge uh, cancel Reinhardt. Uh, I noticed something before Jeff when we were on with Winston. Uh, my Winston on live, uh, not <laughs> able to shoot at range. <laughs> can you can right. you explain that to us a little bit? So yeah, I was wondering if people picked up on that. So we were first watching Winston there. Um, this is an example of you know some of the tank changes we're talking about um, in regards to five and five, but also a larger change we're talking about making tanks. Uh, a lot more aggressive, be able to um, be a little more hybrid on the damage side and less just raw protection. Um, so on Winston's side, um, he's ulting right now, unfortunately, you can't see it, but um, <laughs> he can't do it while he's ulting. But his, uh, oh. his alternate fire there, which he's doing right now, there it is, you can charge up like a condensed blast of lightning from his gun and fire it off as a single sort of like uh, blast attack at longer range. Um, and so he actually, the charge up is kind of interesting with it for him because you could do it while you're leaping. And so there's like, 
theoretically more burst combos you can do where you're jumping on top of somebody, charging up in the air, and burst, you know, release it right before you land on them, and then you get the stomp damage too, and you can shock them or do a quick melee combo. Um, it's a lot more interesting things. On top of the fact that, you know, the Wisdom players know a lot of times you're, you're you know, you shock somebody, they're getting away, you think you can finish them, and they just like, you know, fair abuse <laughs> yeah. away, or somebody just barely gets away, you get that extra you know, alternate fire shot to try to take, take him out on the way. And it's actually interesting yeah. playing against him now because you now are cognizant of that. So <laughs> sometimes you're leaving a little earlier. Like, well, I'm going to get blasted probably if I just like run away. So uh, I have to be able to survive that. Yeah, um, I think that's one of the decisions all Winston players face. It's like, okay, I've jumped on this player. I've gotten them weak. I can either now get out of my bubble and try to finish them off or just kind of hope a teammate does. But now giving him, I think it kind of goes back to more like that player, you know, agency that you were talking about being able to kind of take over the game, being able to finish it off. Uh, this uh, the nano boost and Ryan, uh, th this will never get old. Uh, you know, just, just, seeing their, just seeing Reinhardt nano boosted, just swinging. I'm sure it makes the fans out there happy that I uh, know that was a, a, a Dragon Blade, a Gelting Genji he was able to take out. Is, uh, <laughs> right. It's kind of the bane of existence of a lot of people. Uh, but this yeah. looks like, I guess, the second checkpoint, right? So this will unlock the interior. Of uh, Grand Central Station. Oh, this is awesome. So it goes in. So the payload kind of goes inside of the station and uh, kind of curves around, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you can see the payload is driven by an Omnic who is yeah. a little easter egg to our production direct uh production director on the team our executive producer uh, so he got a name yes yeah, chaco <laughs> I, he's uh, gonna be a fan favorite oh he's even got it on the back i didn't realize i thought it was like i thought it was like an unofficial name like oh yeah it's chaco no, he no, he's, he's yeah. got the suit our executive producer so he's uh, he's helped us out a lot and it was only fitting uh, he has a uh, that we, he's lived in um, New York as well, yeah. so he he helped out a lot on this map. So, and awesome. we have um, countless debates about the right type of pizza with him as well. <laughs> yes, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean New York style pizza is the dominant pizza. Uh, I believe it's the water, but uh, that is probably for a different stream. Yeah, do you really uh, want to get into this? My my thoughts on the, the the water in New York creating the better pizza dough. Uh, I, you, you also notice, uh, at least I notice, the new sounds, especially when, like, Ash oh, yeah. shoots. Uh, that is something that, uh, you know, it was discussed at BlizzCon Line, but I think it's different to kind of see it in action and mm -hmm. also to see all of the other players at the same time with those audio changes. It just makes the game feel even you know, more realistic. Yeah, the, the sounds can get really punchy, and it just feels good to hold the trigger down with these different heroes. Um, but you also get more information from it. So we've spent a lot of time not just um, developing what these sounds are, but how they play in different environments. So we've kind of upgraded the entire sound system across the game. So let's say when um, that ash is in a side room firing from that room, you really kind of understand where they're at and what type of environment that they're in better than you did before. And then you can kind of take that information and make different decisions. Or, or additional wow. decisions because of it. All right, so we got a map complete from the offense here. Not bad, not bad in their first go. The the players are so competitive. I have to say this to the stream that we were like, yeah, yeah, this is fun. Like everybody have a great time. And then everyone's like, put your SR in the chat. We're gonna make balanced teams. <laughs> like who's playing what? It's uh, it's just I feel like it's just the nature of Overwatch, right? Like it it always starts off, yeah, let's play for fun. And then you know you you lose a game. You're like, all right. Like uh, everybody, pick it up. Like let's uh, let's change things. It's like that meme when you like you're playing, relaxing in your chair, and then you lose, and you lean forward, get a little more, <laughs> get the yeah. game win <laughs> posture. It's it's those nights of ranked where you lose like two, and you're like you win one, and then you're like all right, play to lose, and then you you, you lose a few more, and then the next thing you know, you wake up, and you're like well, why did I do that? Like 500 SR down the drain. That's yeah. uh. <laughs> uh, so this will be an opportunity to see, like, Roadhog has a, a, a solo tank uh, coming in for the offensive side here. Uh, I feel like he's just going to be, even on uh, live, right? He just takes up so much space, Jeff. Like, yeah. and, and, and he takes up space, not with a shield, but, like, just his body. As I say that, mm. we, we have a Zarya swap. But uh, talk to me a little bit about, like, the thoughts on you know, how, how, like, the Roadhogs of the world, Divas, uh, even sure. Zarya. I know there's some interesting stuff with Zarya uh, as a solo Hi. tank. Yeah, so like I said before, a lot of this is the work of progress. We're still um, yeah. sort of addressing hero by hero. Um, 
But like because once we started going to one tank, it was sort of the big question was like, how to how, what direction are we pushing tanks now? Are we, are we going? We're trying to make Roadhog, you know, a lot more st static defensively and have you know big barriers or something to protect his team, or do we want? More the opposite. We like to take the Reinhardts and the Rissas and Sigmas and actually get you know, give them some more aggression and be a little more like uh, Roadhog and Diva. Um, and so we definitely opted for that latter route after playing because it's like not only is it just more fun to, to have that kind of extra speed and aggression, but you know a lot of what people uh, had a lot of comments on the, in the past when the metas get too full of barriers and shields and honestly even sometimes when there's just you know the one Orisa blocking you with just the, the chain shields and it's just like, you know, people had comments like, oh, I, I feel like I'm shooting shields all the time, which, so, like, we were definitely hearing all that and you could see some of the balance changes we made in the past in the live game and trying to address this, but um, once we got into this situation, we're like, oh, we, this is sort of an opportunity actually here to reduce a lot of these effects and, you know, we still want them to be there and present and be important and you can still block huge abilities. Um, they still ha have a decent amount of health, but, you know, less than they had before. Um, but then in response to that, we get to you can see Reiner here, he got well he hit the wall right there, you can cancel it, but you can cancel your charge <laughs> and you can get two two fire strikes. Um so he's the canceling charge is one of those like sneaky things that seems like to some people might be kind of a minor change, but it almost like completely changes how he plays a lot of ways. It's actually really fun because you can uh it has a really fast recovery when you cancel it. So you can like charge up to a group and then cancel and immediately ult and just like knock everyone down. So the fact that you can even do that is its own now like sort of mini game that people play where you can kind of bluff with it. If people know you have your ult, you think you have your ult, you can just charge right at them and, and they're trying not to get stunned. Like they don't want to fight you necessarily like, like normally because they don't want to get earth shattered. So sometimes yeah. you can like bluff people and are running for cover and you didn't even have it or you save it or something. So and it also just allows him to, you know, get in there and be more aggressive without Sacrificing his health bar, you say? Yeah, it just sounds like another uh, change, almost like how you kind of mentioned, like stuff like that Winston combo, kind of you know, as you're as you're playing and testing and seeing all these different things, like yeah, where the Winston combo, you can you know load up that s secondary fire, come to, like get the jump damage, land on somebody, take them out, like that. You kind of have like this like little meta game with like Reinhardt play, right? Where you know that you kind of have like this another layer of canceling the charge, you know, being able to. Uh, I remember there was one clip, I think, from uh, BlizzCon line and just like a trailer where he, he charges towards the team, cancels, and then shatters them all. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Being able to make plays like that just seems so sick. He's and also you know, got the ability to um, to control his charge more. So you can actually turn oh, right. around corners more. Oh, yeah. Um, so the, the charge, while you can cancel, it's also more aggressive and it's more versatile. Um, I think something else that's really interesting um, if you look at the, if people have noticed what's happening with Zarya, is she has two charges to her bubble now. Oh, um, but they share charges. Is the trick? It's actually what we play tested in uh, the April Fools patch. So as people probably noted, like, you know, some of those changes were a lot of them were just silly, kind of fun, like permanently flying Sigma. But you know, there were some changes we threw in there. I was like, let's see how people react to this. I'm curious what people think. Like, maybe this is something we can try. Um, and, and the Zarya bubbles is one of those things. So. Um, Aaron, you know it's something I was, we just uh, recently kind of put in, main, right? With this one. <laughs> oh yeah. It took me a while <laughs> to get used to the new changes, but once once I really dug in and, and settled with these changes, I realized it's how I I always wanted to play Reinhardt this way, basically. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the charge in and. and <laughs> smash yeah, we were joking about that the other day, where <laughs> uh, uh, even uh, I'm like. Yeah, like like the the canceling the charge just feels so right that yeah. I, I, but you're so like trained to kind of how it is like where you're just charging into walls right. <laughs> that I was like wait I was like I don't have to do this anymore no. like I can just I can just go like uh, it's it's such like a great quality of life change yeah yeah something else I, I think that's oh, really interesting here is this like this fight's been going on for a while neither tank has fallen. Um, and the, the oh, support yeah. have been doing such a good job at, at keeping the tanks up because there's there's only one of them that that they have to actually focus on, um, and the fights feel really really good being the tank player now. Like the amount of times you get into this situation where it feels hopeless, you're low on health. Mm -hmm. um, a, there's a bunch of the enemy players focusing on you, and you're able to c still come out of it. Um, it feels so incredibly good, and you feel really powerful. Yeah, it's uh, 
it, it, I think that it, that has to be something that you guys have kind of gotten in feedback that from a support point of view, you're able to dump resources into just one tank and that also probably frees you up <clears throat> to do a, a little bit of other stuff, right? Where you know, Batiste can do a little bit more damage, you, you know, Zen, you can kind of orb the tank and then focus on the damage that uh, probably has to be way easier in supports now. For sure. Yeah, we, we got a lot of feedback from support players. It, it, it's a lot easier to focus. And a lot of times you almost have this like uh, communication between the two support players. And, you know, you have like Mercy's like, I'm just going to be, you know, on tank duty and just be on tank basically the whole time. And you have like Lucio or something like that to, to spot heal everybody else and you can speed everybody up. But there's other strats. Like sometimes we've seen people go too big heal, you know, main healers essentially and try to just focus so hard on their tank that even with like Discord on them, it's just hard to kill them. Um, so that's going to be mm -hmm. interesting strat too. So I don't even sure like what their quote unquote meta is entirely yet, especially because we're changing <laughs> things all the time. I guess it's pretty hard for them to settle, but yeah, uh, it's it's been a lot uh, of fun. Uh, this Zen UI is uh, new. Oh yeah, uh, it actually looks really cool. Uh, is this is something obviously that's uh, incredibly new? I think on live, like the it's kind of displayed on the right. Yeah, yeah, we're generally um, looking through this. Oh, go, go ahead, sorry, Jeff. I was saying we're generally looking at anywhere we can improve. Uh, hero specific UI stuff like this and we felt like this could use you know a big update and it'd be a lot more readable yeah um, I like think the, one of the things I'm most excited about with the, the healer UI is um, it's not just on Zen but it's on mercy also you see the portrait of the of the player that you're healing um, and so it's just a lot easier to, to kind of figure out who you've got um, instead of just using something like a nameplate you know. Um, and, yeah, and it's not off to the side, right? It's like center screen, so you're yep. able to still kind of focus down the middle. Yeah, and you can see his Discord is down there as well. So you have like Harmony and Discord orbs are kind of both um, shown on each side of the of the ult at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we, we have an overtime here. I, I can imagine the comms are... Uh... Everybody's starting to get pretty sweaty now. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we get towards the end of the map. Uh, so th this has really been, I, I gotta say for you guys probably, uh, th this is probably awesome to see like the game actually being, it's one thing I think to play, but now to like observe and be able mm -hmm. to watch and obviously, you know, the people you guys work with every day, this has to be pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely uh, is. We've been playing it in this state for a long time too. And it's always, it's always so tough to um, to play a game a certain way at work and then go home and it it operates in a totally different way and you're yeah. playing with people online and you can't help but think like if only you knew <laughs> right <laughs> what I was playing you know every every right. day um, and so it's just it feels really good to to have that out in front of in front of our community so they can kind of see what we've been doing yeah. there's actually a ton uh, of like small changes in here too like I'm curious if people picked up on after one game. Um, like one example of a small change that uh, actually we may end up removing, but it's in this build right now, is because um, we've had it for a while now, but we just had to do this discussion, maybe we want to pull it again, is uh, we've actually slowed the movement acceleration rate of everybody in the game just very slightly. Huh. Um, and the reason for that was to try to create um, a little more... Uh, sort of prediction element to shooting an enemy as opposed to... Like you can kind of you know, ADA, D spam a lot of times, or just like turn directions so fast that it was really hard to lead a shot or, you know, sometimes it felt like you're, you're guessing a little bit on a high, in which direction they're going to go. So we tried to like just notch it down just a little bit so you, can, you can't really feel it as much in, in first person, but um, it's kind of one of the subtle things. But uh, after sitting with her for a while, even just like, I think it was like last week or earlier this week, we, we started bringing up a thread again, like, do we want to keep this actually? This has been around for a while. Is everyone still happy with this? So that's just this an example of like the This is very controversial. Core. Like uh, among the design team, <laughs> it like, is, there's yeah. a lot of back and forth on this one. So, but I think what it, it, whether or not we keep a change like that in the game, I think what it speaks to is the uh, the amount of systems and how deep we're looking at like the entire right. experience of PvP in the game. Yeah, seems like no uh, no stone on PvP is being left like uh, you know untouched, right? Where you're able to kind of look o under kind of every rock, you know, see see what you guys want to do. Uh, I want to bring somebody in from the community uh, real quick. I can uh, welcome in Stylosa, uh, dude. What what do you hello. think? Uh, uh, f first looks. What do you have? What do you think, man? Uh, I'll be honest. I was a little bit skeptical when I first uh, heard about five v five. Um, yeah, you know, rip to the off tanks kind of thing, but. Um, I don't know. Based off watching that uh, 
first map there on New York. Mm, I don't know. It looks quite spicy. This does could be quite good. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I, I'm really excited. Like as somebody who uh, I I will wait in the DPS queue, uh, you know, as 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 long as I gotta wait, you know. And but now like seeing the tanks and seeing how aggressive you can play and you know push the pace, uh, I'm I'm excited uh, to to be able to kind of now d dive into the tank role and also when I'm support, you know, uh, to throw a few heals on my tank and then start pumping out some damage, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, super buff tanks, you're just gonna go in, right? This is. Uh... Yeah, it's always been That's the dumb thing when, well, when you're playing Reinhardt, right? You don't want to charge in most of the time, but now it's like, yeah, just go in. <laughs> yeah, now, 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 yeah, now, now I'm, uh, I'm going full throttle. I'm charging back in. We can bring, uh, we can bring uh, Aaron and Jeff back in, uh, as our, our next map's going to be a game mode that we saw at BlizzCon line, uh, BlizzCon in 2018. It seems like uh, forever ago, is a uh, push. Uh, how has the game mode changed since we last saw it? Um. We haven't made a lot of changes to the mode yeah. itself, at least as far as like the big rules go for it, but we've continued developing for it. So we we have more than one push map um, in development, and I think we have more than one that we'll even be looking at today. Um, so we're really committed to the mode um, and we have a lot of fun playing this thing. Um, I think the, the interesting thing about push to me is it, um, from the outside, it sort of looks like it's a riff on payload. Um, but there's something about having the, the, this robot move back and forth in the map that makes this very special. I almost think of push um, more as a moving control point or, or, or a, a match of control more than a, a, a match of payload. Um, and you'll kind of see it. The, the, the mode can be really flanky. Um, so there's a lot of other heroes in here that I think can get play in push. And a lot of that has to do with just the, the bi-directional nature of that robot in the map and also because of how quickly it moves. Yeah, now if you've never seen push before, uh, there's a robot in the middle, both teams will come out and kind of fight for it. And then once you get control, you can start pushing your barricade towards uh, the opponent's spawn. It's the name push, guys. <laughs> uh, Stylosa, you played it. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, at yeah. BlizzCon. How'd you how'd you find it then? I mean, it seems like such a long time ago when I played this at BlizzCon. Uh, yeah, it was pretty hectic. I mean, I, I will say though, the uh, teams were horrendously unbalanced at BlizzCon, and uh, I mean, I think I had like Siegel, XQC, uh, Fran, and me were playing against random people. It, it, it was a massacre. That's cruel. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was just <laughs> AFK. <laughs> it didn't really matter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Um, I can't wait to see it. I, I just, hey, any Overwatch 2 news, give it me. I'll consume that stuff. I <laughs> Just give it me. Uh, how do you guys think it feels now uh, in 5v5? Because the last time we saw Push at BlizzCon, the, the PvP was six on six. Does it play any different, you guys feel, especially on Toronto? A little bit. Um, so Push has always been maybe our most hectic mode oh, yeah. or our, our most dynamic game mode. Um, and it, part of the reason for that is the way these maps are designed is we have a very um, sort of like wavy path that the, the robot travels on. So the objective is kind of always moving back and forth. And then we have a lot of very direct routes across the map that the players can take. And because of that, it, it allows players to take a lot of shortcuts, circle around the enemy team, um, and it creates a lot of these flanking opportunities. Um, with five players, there's just one less person you kind of have to kind of keep in the in in your mind's focus and and kind of like worrying about where they're going to show up at any time um, and so it's settled down a little bit i still think it has that dynamic dynamic nature that we've always loved about push it's just a little bit easier to to kind of understand F fast paced i think that's uh yes. that's kind of the way i would put it like you have uh a lot of the buildings you can go through different types of routes you can take uh i'm i'm excited let's jump into map number two this will be uh toronto this will be push uh this is the map that we actually saw uh back at blizzcon uh, we all had a chance to play uh it was awesome then I i'm excited to see some of the, like the the flanking characters you can kind of get like an overhead oh, yeah. view of the map now and see you know your your tracers your genjis on this type of map reaper is the one to watch for i think uh, <laughs> it, has map. reaper been tearing it up <laughs> yeah <laughs> Really, so really is. is this map the same as it was back at BlizzCon? Um, or has there been any alterations to it? 
Um, it's it's virtually the same. Um, yeah. When when we had the map at BlizzCon, it's um, it was definitely a work in progress, and it's still a work in progress now. But we've had the opportunity to add additional polish and and art um, resources into the map since then. All the maps just look so good. Uh, I, I I know I see Stylos' face when we do the fly through, and he's just like <laughs> smiling. And he's just like so giddy, like oh, oh it's like it's uh, it's so fun. Where I feel like uh, I feel like push is going to add a different type of element to the game that like you know, escort and in a uh, hybrid, like you mentioned, are like the payload oriented maps. And I think push kind of plays like that a little bit. But there's so much more movement, I feel like, than both of those. And just you take so many different fights all over the map. Uh, and I also love the fact that you just can't really tie on this map. Uh, I think uh, one of the things uh, like about assault is that you can, you know, you have like these like long like battles and then it's a draw and you're just like, oh, I wanted to, I mean, I may maybe even be okay taking a loss there, you know, but like uh, th this, you definitely get a winner. Yeah, definitely. And I, I really like game modes where the actual objective and the mechanics help pace out the the speed of gameplay and it was really really hard for us to do that with 2cp you can have incredibly long matches in 2cp and sometimes like really quick blowouts um, and it just came down to what the two teams were doing and the game mode itself wasn't really doing anything to enforce that the way it might in control or in payload uh, and so with push um, we have more of that to where the game mode is actually is actually helping to control the length of the match um, and, and the, the pace of the match. Yeah, as uh, you, you see on the clock, it's a eight minute uh, clock right now. So yeah, it is a, it is pretty fast. I think it's definitely intended with you know, some of these flames in mind as uh, it's a poor Lumpy gets taken out right off, <laughs> right, right, right off the rip. Lumpy was going on one of those flanks, didn't turn out, uh, didn't turn out so well. So, so the, does the, uh, the bot unlock right away? Um, it takes about 30 seconds for it to unlock, and, and the reason we do that is we don't want a team to think that there's a certain amount of, of pressure or to have all this pressure to get to it as quickly as possible. We want you to be able to be strategic with the way that you um, approach the, the bot in the middle of the map, and it's it's very similar to the way that control works. So we can see the, the robot. He's got a name, right? Yeah, his name is TWO. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's, uh, we, we see uh, some some Genji play in action. Is yeah, you see like all the buildings you can kind of come from. Players, you know, up above to the side. I think you can definitely see that like you know fast paced. It it, it looks uh, you know, way more like you can as a DPS player just kind of go off to the side, make a play, try and make a. You see here they're going right for the supports. Yep. Yeah, and and the map, it, there's still a main path in push. Yeah. And it's really important for us to have that in all of our in, in all of our map types. Um, but there are a lot of ways to get around that and to get through it, and that's what creates a lot of these opportunities. Going for the remet kill, can't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, no, I'm here, watching yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm fixated on the gameplay. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, this looks, this looks really deathmatchy. This does. Like, we're just, you know, they're just going in, they're having a, a good old brawl, and then obviously the, as the mech or the the point is moving through the map, it's changing up every single time, and it's just, it, to be honest, it looks fairly similar to what I played back at BlizzCon all those years ago. Just with yeah, one I less think... tank. <laughs> it's still yeah, it's just, it's just, yeah. yeah, but it's just more space, I think, that operates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I, I'm I'm somebody who uh, I play a ton of DPS, like, and I'm excited that maybe not everybody will run around in, like, a death ball, and I'll be able to kind of, like, play Tracer <laughs> and go off to the side and make a play. I noticed, too, uh, the green health over Lucio here. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is that oh, on the I... UI now? I actually completely forgot about that. So many changes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, I was like, the uh, sound barrier doesn't give green health when I do it. <laughs> right. So that's something um, we're, we're changing up. I, you know, like everything's work in progress. It's possible to change, although we're pretty happy with it right now. Um, this is a change to uh, what we kind of call over health. This is like a larger system, which is, you know, on Overwatch 1, you can have over armor and over shields, depending on who's giving it to you, much like you can have normal health and shields and armor. Um, so, you know, once we started getting into 
trying to create clarity and make sure you know, the game's very readable in all these senses, it, you know, like I mentioned with uh, Zenyatta's UI and everything. Um, that came up too, is like, you know, it's possible to get, especially you get into like PvE talents and stuff like that, your health bar can get really colorful really fast. Like, you could have, you know, health and then armor and then shields and then over health, armor and shields. You could literally have <laughs> six segmented colored health. And it was like, I can't even understand what I'm looking at right now. This is like so insane. So it's we, we ended up um, condensing all of the over over health uh, concepts into just one concept now, and so you know it was kind of kind of interesting. Other than Summer's EMP, over shields was more of a thematic thing than anything because it doesn't it didn't regen like normal shields because it's a, you know, over health doesn't doesn't have a, a, a a regeneration value so it was like it was kind of nonsense anyway honestly so now yeah. we kind of have everything getting us into green health and it's very understandable that you know you see somebody with green and you can see like okay that's not you know that's over healthy it's either going to drain or if i shoot through it they can't be healed and stuff like that so um it kind of helps uh clarify all that that poor two is getting a workout going back and forth but uh uh, I noticed before there was like a circle. So is there like kind of uh, capture points, like progress? Does that change the respawns at all? How does that work on push? Yeah, it does. So the robot starts in the middle of the map and it pushes those um, like the, those red barricades in front of it. Um, and you can use those to kind of like in world see what your high watermark is. And if if the robot's able to push it to the checkpoint, um, it will unlock a forward spawn room for the, the team that was able to do it. You can kind of see it just off to the left here behind Reinhardt. Um, so if the attacking team can push it over there, they'll unlock that spawn point, and it gives them a big advantage in order to kind of push through the rest of the map. And then I assume when they're, uh, when two starts moving the other direction, I guess it'd be, uh, sorry, it's to start moving the other direction, uh, they would lose that forward spawn, right? Yeah, but there the is one. Yep, there is an additional detail there. It's TWO has to be pushed back to the middle of the map before you lose oh, your forward okay. spawn room. Oh. And we actually started it the way um, that you described it. But a lot of times the robot could just move back and forth across this one checkpoint. <laughs> and it got like really chaotic and you'd have no idea where you were going to spawn. So we, we kind of gave you a grace period in there or made it a little bit stickier um, by, by forcing him to return to the middle. Yeah, that's a good call. I can imagine if that was the case now, yeah, you would have like, if I spawned this one second, I would spawn close and then like Stylosa spawns the next second and he's far away. Yep. And I, I mean, that happens in Overwatch, you know, um, but it was just, it was way too blatant. This with double that. bubble Zarya is sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She what? is incredible. I love what? her. It's actually a yeah. pretty recent is, is thing that... we put, checked it in, but it's pretty new. Uh, is her damage ramped up when she's charged? Like more so than yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So you, you have the same bubbles you had before, but yeah, they're, yeah. they're both using shared charges. So yeah, we, we found that because this increased flexibility in how you use it, she tends to be at higher charge more often. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is a good example, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. oh, so man. it's actually even a lot of playtests. I can find myself like, you know, sending a message to people, well, what was your average energy, would you say? Or how often? It's like, this is kind of tearing it up. That seems a little insane. <laughs> so, Balancing uh, it TBD, looks, but it looks so fun though. <laughs> I mean, as somebody who loves to play Zarya, like uh, I also can imagine the people that I would play with on Zarya would just automatically double bubble themselves and right. everybody <laughs> else. Think, actually, was was themselves. Like, okay, yeah, let's just run in and double bubble ourselves. But then you start to think like, actually, if I save two and you know Genji pulls out his blade on my team, I think if I double <laughs> shield him and we, you know, I save that up, uh, that's going to be yeah, kind of ridiculous. So. Oh yeah, I didn't even think of that. Like, uh, yeah, not just applying the two bubbles to yourself, but you could because they share the charge, you could theoretically like bubble a Genji blade and then bubble him again, right? Yeah. Or a feral. Oh, yeah. It works really well. So, so many, is, uh, so many different ways. But. Yeah, so this is like, as I just, just kind of recently put in, um, coming off the back of the, um, April 1st stuff and, and seeing how we feel about it. And it's, um, been pretty interesting. I, I, I'm certainly concerned about it in some cases, but it, it also leads to some really awesome play. So I'm kind of letting it rock for a while and see, what get, see how it feels. Work in progress, but yep. I, I like the progress on that one. Design, anyway. <laughs> so, so, so uh, OT, how does the rule here work? I guess they, they have to push all the way to the end, or do they just have to beat 
the time of the blue team. They just need to beat the time of the blue team. So the, the win condition for push is whoever has pushed it the furthest by the end of time wins, or if you happen, or if you're able to push it all the way to the end of the map, you'll win instantly. So now they're unlocking their forward spawn room right here. Oh, the, the, the tragedy strikes for the blue team. Y yeah, they need to stay near the robot, uh, I believe, to keep pushing. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah, right. And so, so you can have, you know, the, the the good old blunder where everybody walks off the objective and two, two just looks <laughs> on sad. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a problem. Oh. Yeah, I imagine these games go right down to the wire. Uh, I just mean, as we saw definitely there. hectic there towards the end. This is this is going to be quite good for Overwatch League, I'd imagine. This is... Uh, mm, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed watching that. Yeah, I think... Uh, Stylus, I think to your point, like... Uh, yeah, when you think about, like, you know, 5v5 or 6 on 6, you're like, oh, well, like, does it still have that, like, you know, big, like energy like that fast paced like kind of and you see it there i think especially on push i think it's why it's such like a great representative of the the game uh is that yeah you still have these fast paced fights you know you're you're able to you know make plays all over the map it I, sort of ramps up right as the match goes on it yeah. gets more and more and more intense and oof, you have a big sort of crescendo towards the end that's really nice i really like that it's got it's got that overwatch music where yeah, it kind of yeah. adds to the <laughs> the suspense of it all yeah, and push, this happens in push a lot. It goes to overtime um, more often than it doesn't. And it was a decision that we made when we were developing the mode um, where we had to decide what was more important for push. Was it for one team to be able to get the robot all the way to the end of the map? Or is it more important for the robot to be moving back and forth in the map? Um, because it's it's really hard to get both of those. And so we think that this this mode plays better to have it moving back and forth more often. And so the the mode mechanics and the map design is all kind of tailored to have that. And it get, and it makes it like really, really exciting. Yeah, it's just the, the fast moving, fast flow of combat, right? I think uh, the kind of uh, Jeff, like in your wheelhouse, right? Like for you know, just hero design and being able to kind of come up with these creative different things that, you know, like we saw Zarya there on push, like it's not a hero <laughs> that you would kind of think were like a, an aggressive type of game mode like that, but she was like, she looked unkillable all the time and she looked yeah. crazy. She's really scary in this form for sure. And, you know, I think that's kind of what we're thinking for a lot of these, uh, you know, sort of off tanky kind of characters before, you know, Roadhog and, and D.Va. And we saw D.Va there played as well, and D.Va's gotten a lot of changes too. So I think it's worth noting that we're not like taking every tank and just making them super aggro. In some cases, we're pushing some of the more aggro tanks and making them a little tankier. So, I mean, a lot of cases they have a lot more health as people notice, but um, D.Va has a lot more sort of matrix juice in the can, so she can use it a lot more. So that's an example of where we didn't just like give her more missiles or something like that and let her go kill everybody. It's like she can actually protect her team a little more. So she slides a little bit closer towards, you know, the the, the, the defensive route. There's probably players out there who want those missiles, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy, <laughs> <That's there. true. laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that it's not happening. But uh, Stylosa, final thoughts, man. Uh, excited to have you on. What do you think? Yeah, no, I'm I'm I am very impressed with that. Much more impressed than I thought I would be. Um, it's been so long since I've seen push in action. Um, and it yeah, it definitely looks better 5v5. Like, yeah, I don't know. That, that, that's, I, I want to see more. I want to see more of this. Like, you know, I, well, I feel hard well, done by just getting one game. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, Silos is not going to leave the call. He's just going yeah, no, to gonna, gonna gonna <laughs> plant, his, plant his stake down and just hang out. But uh, guys, we're going to go for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, Super's going to join the show, give his thoughts on some of the things he's seen, go over some of the stuff that's going on with the tanks. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch 2 PvP Developer Livestream. I'm Mitch Leslie, and already we've seen a ton of what is in the works for Overwatch 2 PvP. There's a lot to take in, obviously, with new maps, new game types, and changes, of course, to some of the core mechanics of the game. So we're going to rehash a couple of things, of course, over the next few maps, but we want to drill down on a couple of the things we've already talked about so far. And to help me do that now, we'll be joining our Overwatch League superstar, Matthew Super Delici, of course, is uh, everybody's favorite neighborhood main tank. How you doing, Super? Obviously, uh, big news today. I'd love to get some of your initial thoughts on it. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, I mean, the tank changes, that's definitely the one that, you know, kind of stuck out to me. Uh, the fact that, you know, only one tank, because I'm a tank player, and, uh, you know, my experience with tank, you know, it goes up, it goes down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get bullied uh, as, as a tank with two. Um, so, I'm, you know, I'm curious to see how that's going to progress and change to make it so that it's a lot easier for one tank to be, uh, you know, work properly and, and not have as many struggles. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I think you watch in any sort of tank player's stream right now. You can sort of see plenty of the ups and also some of the downs here. Obviously, we saw, you know, maybe some more power being shifted in the direction of the tanks, right? And you know, we saw Reinhardt with the double fire strikes. He's got some more of that charge control and the Winston changes. What was your thoughts uh, when you first saw the fact that Winston now has a bit of longer range uh, <laughs> equipment to bring to the fight? Yeah, I thought that was uh, a little bit interesting. I also like that they grabbed the Zarya from the experimental. Um I mean, at least in my ch when I played the experimental, I thought that the cooldown needed to be shorter on that. Um, but I, I like that in general. They're trying to give more power if it's going to be just one tank, uh, because I feel like otherwise a lot of tanks like you know Zarya and Diva, uh, they would kind of struggle because but they're the way they're designed right now. I feel like they weren't really um, you know made to be played solo, if that makes sense. Um, but now I feel like if they if they do the proper changes, then I think it could actually be pretty good. Uh, absolutely. And you saw there as well a couple of the changes. We mentioned Winston's maze. We haven't really talked about it. And it's definitely part of a, a wider conversation that we can sort of tap into uh, in a moment. And of course, uh, we'll be rejoined in, in just a moment by some members of our development team as well to maybe add some context and field some more uh, of these questions here. We, we already heard a little bit about uh, Diva and uh, sort of the way that she was sort of tweaked. So I want to take this opportunity to bring back in Jeff Goodman, of course, the lead hero designer on Overwatch 2 and Dion Rogers, our associate art director. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here. Of course, now you have a bona fide main tank player at the professional level in the room here. And uh, super, of course, a chance to share some of your thoughts. But gentlemen, overall, it definitely feels like the role of the tank changes vastly now in this, la in this landscape. Not only is it just one tank, but maybe some of the roles or things you're expected to do in the game may have shifted. Yeah, I think absolutely. I, I mean, it's sort of like, it, you know, definitely in the past, it's somewhat true as well that you're definitely leading your team. But I think now you're doing it kind of by yourself and you can really sort of pace the game out, at least for your team, exactly how you want it to go, um, which, you know, some. So I think some people are sort of um, internally, we've had people like kind of worried about that pressure a little bit like, oh, man, that's a lot of like, I have a lot of responsibility now. But I think as you start to play it and you just realize that, Wow, I actually have a lot more tools to do this than before, though. I mean, I'm, I'm a lot stronger. I can actually survive these encounters a lot more, especially with healers both focusing on me now and everything. So um, it ends up just kind of being empowering and super fun when you get in there, um, especially obviously with the ability to cancel Reinhardt Charge and stuff, so you don't have to overcommit. And uh, you can poke a little bit with Winston, so you don't have to overcommit with him either. And so a lot more control. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It, earlier I mentioned I used to be a Brian main as well. Nice. And these changes. So <laughs> it took me a while to get used to the changes, but it, it, I agree with what Jeff said. There's a lot more choice and tactical decisions you're making as the tank now. That it just feels fun and, and really good for the team. 
I love that you, you sort of mentioned uh, Reinhardt here as well, because I don't know if something that we maybe haven't covered a great depth so far, but because the role of the tank maybe changes or maybe it becomes more focused now to some degree, um, you know, Reinhardt, obviously, we've known him to have a, a sort of a passive ability on live where he's less affected by some of this crowd control or knockback stuff. Oh, yeah. I want to talk a bit about role passives because that's something that is, uh, you know, is coming to Overwatch 2 and really sort of sets some of these roles apart from each other a bit more, Jeff. Yeah, so this is um, a new thing coming to Overwatch 2. It's, um, for those that don't know, it's every role, so tanks, DPS, and support, get a passive or a set of passives related to their role. Um, so in this case, you can see uh, tanks have a couple things uh, associated with them. One is they're reduced, they get knockback uh, reduction on them, so you can't knock them around quite so easily, which thematically makes sense too, but if you're a tank player, you're playing against, you know, Lucio and you know whoever else it can be really infuriating sometimes just be flying around all the time not be able to control your character as well um, so that's uh, one of the things they get and the other thing they get that we we heard about tanks especially tanks like Roadhog who don't have a barrier is people feel like they generate too much ultimate for the enemy team especially if you're trying to be aggressive which is what we're trying to incentivize that you know you come in you do maybe you cancel charge and try to get hammer swings in there to build your ult but like did you was that a worthwhile trade-off if the enemy shot you so much that they built more yeah. ult than you did? So what we've done is shooting an enemy tank generates less ult for you. So your enemies get less ult for shooting you across the board for all tanks now. Um, and these are obviously the values we're, we're, we're tuning, but you can kind of see it here a little bit. Um, you know, depending on who you're shooting, you can generate a lot less ult. Um, and then for DPS players, uh, the role passive they get right now, and this is something we're definitely iterating on and tuning maybe even more aggressive than the other ones, is they get a movement speed bonus just across the board, which you can see here. Um, you can see it's not like massive, it's not like everyone's going to be soldiers sprinting around the map or anything. Um, <laughs> but we have found so far, like, I mean, our players probably attest this too, like any kind of movement speed changes to anything is huge. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is why Lucio was considered sort of like, you know, mandatory for so long because he was the only one bringing move speed. I granted his a lot more move speed, but um, so you know we started a little higher. We were tuning it back a little bit. We're trying to find the number here, but um, it's really interesting in what it allows you to do as far as even just like basic map traversals. You can just flank a lot easier and not you don't have to commit as much time to the flank and to get back. Uh, but also like there are times where let's say you're like Reaper or something uh, and you commit your resources to, to get at an enemy Zenyatta or something and he's trying to run around a corner just to get away from you and you know you could just catch him you, I mean give it enough a little bit of time you'll just get, get up close to him and, and you know close that gap so um, that's pretty powerful uh, even though it's kind of a little subtle there um, and then the, the, the support changes is this is probably something that on a mains especially you're gonna love to hear <laughs> but the support players all get automatic health regen after a certain amount of time of not taking damage, which is basically Mercy's passive. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So it's Mercy's passive, but a, a lot less of a degree, and Mercy's passive will still exist as like, a much stronger right. version. Um, but this is still there, so, you know, it, you know, I always feel like you're an auto player. You know, obviously when you're really low, you're like, I guess I'll nade myself, but sometimes you're missing, like, 50 health, and you're like, eh... Am I going to waste my nades just to heal myself? Where's my other healer? Usually like, the other the healers health are in like, front of you as well, so like they have to turn around right, to see right. you. Exactly. So um, that's been really awesome, especially for us um, designing new heroes, because I feel like we're in this position every time we design a new healer. It's like, okay, well, we have to come up with some mechanic that they can heal themselves, because it's like ridiculous that you can't like you know shoot yourself in the foot or whatever. It was always on a joke. but um, So now, now they have these sort of like, you don't have to worry about that anymore unless we wanted to add something like in Mercy's case or even Zenyatta's case for shields. Shields regenerate on top of this so you'll actually get double regen uh, if, you're, if your shields are regening. So there are th those heroes still retain their sort of extra regeneration bonuses but it's a lot nicer for Ana. Now of course on the horizon we, we're going to be showing more of our, of our new maps here in Overwatch 2 but something I noticed that kind of kind of snuck past us here some uh, some footage of May. So oh, we'll yeah. this because May seems like she's been changed yeah. pretty drastically, at least uh, in terms of how she yeah. operates. So this is actually the kind of tip of the iceberg and some changes I can oh, talk about. But can May was the, the first one we sort of checked into the build and we wanted to play with for a long time. So if you notice here, she doesn't actually fully freeze the enemy here at all. She still slows them, but Thank she doesn't God. never go to a stun all <laughs> the way. Thank God. The <laughs> compensation, of course, is it does a lot more damage. So it's... You know, it's really scary to be getting hit by her because you're taking damage and you're slowed. But of course, you, there's a lot of ways to escape. You can have help and everything. Um, but you never actually get in that lockdown state. And be like, okay, well, here's the free headshot. I guess I'm dead. Um, it's, you know, and, and for her, it's really interesting too because 
she still has, at least right now, she still has that sort of cleave effect, the piercing that can hit multiple targets. So and you're doing so much damage now, if you can, it's kind of fun to play this game and try to get all this extra damage because you could straight up just kill people now by piercing through a tank or you know certainly if Zarya's ulting or something like that you can just pierce through everybody and just kill them yourself. Um, so it's kind of an interesting, uh, still has an interesting back and forth with her secondary fire as well. But as I mentioned it's kind of the tip of the iceberg because um, what we're really playing around with and this isn't actually in this build this is something we're, we've been experimenting with uh, hasn't quite been successful enough to quite put it in the build right. yet, but this is something we're looking at is just generally looking at crowd control across the whole game. Like, where do we want it to be? Who should have it? Because um, we could certainly are, we've gotten feedback over time. We totally understand and respect. Like, sometimes you're playing against you know the ultimate CC team with like May <laughs> and I don't know McCree yeah. and whatever, and especially as a tank. I'm sure you're well aware yeah. of this, and you're just like, oh my god, I hate my life. Um, so yeah. we. <laughs> We were experimenting with, uh, like, just generally setting guidelines. Like, okay, tanks should probably have CC. They're all about space control, and you know they have that role to be able to earth shatter or you know, create create that um, those great opportunities. But should as many DPS heroes have CC? It may maybe McCree doesn't need to stun, you know. And and so we're looking at all of, all of these, especially the mostly actually really the DPS and the supports. Um, Currently, like again, this is all like really hot the presses because it's not even in this okay. build. But um, we're, we're probably thinking that like Anna's pretty cool right now. P people are generally pretty cool with her sleep. Um, there's a skill shot element you involved. Can give me one there's more sleep a lot of if you want. <laughs> just keep going. I'm not like a Call fan of sleep cards. Just kind of <laughs> hits everybody. <laughs> you give me cool talent ideas actually. Um, but uh, so like that, you know, we're still playing. That one seems pretty cool. But like McCree. Probably not so cool, even though he's sort of like ingrained on the Kree's side of the sun. That's like what he's about. But it's like, okay, well, what if he didn't? What if he had something else? What if it worked mm -hmm. a different way? Um, and of course, that almost has as many ramifications as the tank changes. Because yeah. it's like now we're talking about, okay, we take all the CC away, Tracer, Doomfist, Wrecking Ball. These heroes are just like out of control now, right? Because like they're sort of heavily countered by CC. So then we got to go back and change those heroes, of course, as well as the compensation for the CC heroes. So that is something that's like heavily in progress, and uh, I'm hopeful that um, I think we'll be able to get some reductions in there. I'm sure, sure. I think a lot of our fans would like to see it. Um, so, trying to, you know, a lot of these changes, including the tank changes, are trying to get back to like, you know, core shooter yeah. roots. It, it, um, it definitely feels like Jeff. Um, you know, we we were at points we were wondering, like, is this game like a MOBA? Like, how important is that positioning, right, the tactical, right. the ability usage element? How important is the the the, the shooting uh, element? Uh, it's not uncommon for you know. It, you know, for developers to say this game's all, you know, it's about the gunplay, but as the game evolves and you have these ideas and you bring these new abilities in that, it can sort of change mm -hmm. that. Super. Um, usually, mate, it's hard to get you to uh, stop talking, but uh, you've had a moment to absorb <laughs> some of this. Let's let, let's talk about how you think the role of the main tank or tank in this regard is, is going to change in maybe an Overwatch 2 and, and sort of some of your thoughts about where the CC is going. How's it going to feel? You know, you have a rock hard mental, dude. Like uh, the way you, you sit on that stream and you just go, 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 but... Tell us how you think this sort of changes. Yeah, uh, so that was kind of a, a big worry of mine was like you say one tank and then I'm thinking current Overwatch where you know you're playing against a Brig and then an Ana and then a McCree mm -hmm. and a May and then you know you're stun locked for 17 seconds and then you want to alt F4. Um, but if they're you know if it is you know looking at the rest of the, the the CC in the game and you're looking to reduce that across the board and then on top of that you're adding more utility to tanks I think that's you know it's going to make it easier to do that. Um, because I, 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 I have felt that CC is kind of, um, it's a little out there sometimes, you know, it's, it's not always <laughs> the most fun to play against. Um, and especially for me, I always felt that displacement CC was almost more egregious than like stuns. Because like, if you get booped by like a Lucio and like a Brig Whip shot or a ball that can like swing back and forth, I always felt that that was more um, like annoying and frustrating to play against because you you couldn't really control that like you kind of just got knocked everywhere and that was just the way it was um are those being like looked at as well as stuns or is it like everything across the board yeah definitely but the nice thing is we have this new tuning knob of the tank passives to say you know if we still oh, yeah, want lucio true. to be able to boop enemies off cliffs or something and still mm -hmm. leave that strong but we still we still think tanks are being booped too much we can just dial that like knockback reduction up a little bit for the tanks so they, they you know they they're less affected by it so it's, it's a nice place to be Absolutely. All right, that's that's nice to hear. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, we, we're drilling down pretty heavily into like you know, what what it means to be a tank player, and I think talking about it is good. But I, I kind of want to see some more more of it in action. Um, I mean, Dion, 
we have, I mean, I can see it here on the little preview screen, but our next map is, is really incredible and it really captures, I think, the vivacity and vibrance of a, of, of a region of the world that's really known for it. Talk, us, talk to us through uh, this map that is Rio. Yeah, so Rio, another map we wanted to do for a long time. We have several artists on the team that, that spent a part of their life there. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty fun to kind of dive in and see this Overwatch version of Rio, the, the beautifully painted favelas, colorful, vibrant club. You get to visit where Lucio's club is. Um, the team loves going to Brazilian barbecue. So one of the spawn rooms is a Brazilian barbecue place. You know, it's another map. We're just having a lot of fun creating different details and, and, and this aspirational version of this location for Overwatch 2. And it's a, a, a brand new payload here too. You guys saw earlier, it's a pretty fun carnival float. Uh, so we're just having fun with these masks. We've been the cool Brazilian barbecue. It's uh, fun and sunny and colorful. And I think it's a, a map that feels like Overwatch when you play it, you know? I mean, already that sort of signature vibrance that, you know, so many of, uh, you know, Overwatch's maps have been credited for is there. Can you, uh, obviously, I don't want you to give away too much, too much of the story, but is there a context here? Like wh where are the attackers starting from? Because I see some beach, I see different landscapes sort of getting fleshed out here as we go through the map. Okay, so the defense actually starts in Lucio's home. So yeah, obviously Ooh. there's a story layer to Overwatch that we want to tell. So mm -hmm. Lucio plays a big part of that. So uh, you get a little hint of where we're going with that, but we're not talking too heavily about it. Also, Lucio's club is always, it's kind of a community place. So it's a place, and if it was real, people can come there for free. He, he's a community guy. We wanted to showcase this with this gigantic kind of sci-fi club he has. Um, yeah, it's, it's connected to the story of Overwatch. Uh, you, we'll just have to wait and see how closely Rio plays into the game. You saw a little bit at BlizzCon a while ago, but um, there's definitely more. Right, so this yeah, so I, uh, I do have a question for Jeff. Sorry to cut you off, uh, Mitch, but I do have a question if that's fine. So if I'm pretty sure like way back in the day, there was like an interview that I read that was like, Five was too small and seven was too big for, yeah, for, the, yeah. for the roster limit, and then six was perfect. But like, I'm kind of curious, like, where along, like, the Overwatch timeline did that philosophy kind of change? Like, was it roll lock? Was it like people sure. learning how to play the game better? Like, you, you know what <laughs> I mean? Pretty much every, all of this. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, we know so much about the game. I mean, as kind of Aaron touched on at the beginning, like, before everything, I mean, you could just play five Winstons. In fact, we had an internal tournament where that was yeah. the <laughs> strategy. Five the Winstons and a Zenyatta. <laughs> it was sort of like, oh my god, this seems like maybe a problem, or is this cool? We don't know. Uh, so, like, obviously, when you're building really any game, you try to make the best judgments for what you have and what you're playing, but once you have the game in the wild and get in everybody else's hands and it marinates for a while and you're making changes, like, your opinion on this stuff definitely changes. So, I think over time, um, like it was touched on, we, we were still keeping an open mind to maybe doing some of these kind of changes, and then coming Overwatch 2, we were just like, let's revisit everything, and that was definitely one of the major core decisions of Overwatch 1 we were really looking forward to revisiting, and at that point we were just like, yeah, maybe this is actually just much better, maybe we were wrong all along, although, you know, people always say, uh, it's kind of a design thing, people say, you're not necessarily wrong at the time just because you were wrong in retrospect, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So obviously this is a hybrid battle. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning here. So um, much in the same way as Kings Row, we'll be fighting for control of a payload here, which will eventually roll on out. And we kind of teased, uh, yeah, so uh, these payloads. This is, I mean, I'm no stranger to peacocking. Look at what I'm wearing. But this is uh, this is great. Obviously, we, we tell a story in Overwatch in the in, you know, in Overwatch 1 with, with these payloads here. So looking forward to seeing how that story gets fleshed out. What I'm seeing already is real difference in uh, map geometry, right? As we move into the second phase, all of a sudden it's less about chokes and overpasses and it's just this this, this, this jumble of all these buildings and so much high ground here. Really feel like yeah. the way you play, the map changes drastically here. Yeah, that, that was... Oh, you can go uh, ahead. Oh, that was just one thing. We're, we're trying more of this phased approach with the visuals and the gameplay as we move through the space. So you saw it was a bit more open. As you get the payload, there's a feeling of changing gameplay and art as well. So this visual progression as, as well as gameplay, it's much more clear in some of the newer maps we're working on. 
Yeah, one thing that I maybe it's just the maybe it's just a coincidence, but I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of chokes in 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 Overwatch One, like specifically like I think like Hanamura first or like going through King's Row second, they're very like tight and like it's like perfect for like a Reinhard shield to spread across and it can be like you know a real pain to get through those sometimes because you feel like you really only have like one way to go through. But I'm seeing at least in the other two maps that we looked at a lot more. Uh, a lot more flanks and ways to access the point and I think that's overall better for the design because I feel like when you especially on Hanamura first like going through that choke is kind of you know it, it can be a real it can be real not fun sometimes like if, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're just not clicking or if it's just you know they have a, a hard comp that that you just can't counter and I think it's just better overall yeah if we want to give players more options to solve a problem say they're stuck at the choke they have a few more options to break through, basically. They, they don't have to rely fully on the tank powering through this time. But yeah, that's that's always the thing. We're trying to improve the options the players have to solve situations. Are there going to be previous maps in Overwatch 1 that will be reworked, or...? Uh, we don't know Can yet. Can you not say? Is that secret? No. Or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. So obviously, you look. You've got you've got one less hero on the battlefield. Uh, you, your maps are much more uh, labyrinthine, I guess, or just bigger, right? It's just a large. You know, there's so much more ground you could cover if you wanted to take a different approach. Uh, how do you sort of balance how big the map is, right? Because obviously, there's a sense where, like, you know, it, it, if you go too far one direction, right, it can seem quite barren. But here, like, everything there's attention to detail everywhere, right? There's so many crisscrossing ways of approaching the point. Mm -hmm. Um, so it doesn't feel big, but it, it definitely, uh, as opposed to maps we saw in, in, in Overwatch in, on live right now, it definitely feels bigger, right? Is that ever a consideration trying to balance that, the sort of size and the majesty of it all? Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely more detailed than before. And again, the more options, the, there's more passageways and buildings for players to, to move through and build strategies from, but ultimately the maps are in a fairly similar size to the previous you're just seeing a lot more detail out of mm -hmm. the overwatch 2 engine we have a lot of cool upgrades that allow us to do more while keeping a smooth performance but yeah it's something we're constantly playing with us at the scale of maps and and how it feels to move through the space visually as well as gameplay wise this really has like a dorado feel almost right we have sort of payloads that are moving through underneath and there are yeah. there are multiple levels here this is not just sort of two levels here you can there's even more options i guess to sort of make use of this verticality mm -hmm. yeah there's like a the left high ground right high ground there's so much going on here <laughs> yeah. i love this it, point in particular like taking that middle high ground is you know really important if you can hold it it's fantastic but it's just really hard to hold because you have all these upper flank routes and under flank routes and stuff so uh, it's, it ends up being like kind of a gambit to try to even take it and hold it, especially mm -hmm. when you don't have tanks that can just sit on it with barriers all the time. Um, but <laughs> it's so powerful. You can see where Widow is right there. It's so powerful. You have this line of sight on everything up there. So is, with... is, uni is Universal ult charge nerfed, or is it just as a result of the tank changes that it seems like people are getting their ult slower? It's mostly just the tanks, and we don't have... Mm. They're probably... I can't remember exactly all the individual changes, but I think we probably adjusted a few heroes here and there, um, may have gone up or down on their, on their costs, but um, it's almost entirely just the tank changes. You generate a lot of ult off tanks in our game. Right, I guess there's one less tank to shoot as well, so it makes it right, a true. little bit harder. Although looking at Widow is an interesting example. We haven't adjusted the snipers too much yet, but we're keeping a really close eye on them because a lot of what sort of control snipers is the that fact there's all these barriers you can't shoot through mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. playing as widow against a comp that is you know like a back in the day when it was like wrecking ball only or something like that like you definitely are a lot more powerful so uh we have yeah. to make sure that they're not they don't get out of control i feel because i feel like on some of these choke points it's definitely a lot more wider than than, than some other maps and i feel like uh you know if unchecked some certain widows could do a lot of damage yeah yeah so yeah, it's just yet another thing we got to keep an eye on with the t change like this. Right. I mean, you know, we, we talk about how sort of tanks have changed now to sort of allow them to be more multi-purpose or sort of fill a broader spectrum of roles. Obviously, like, you know, when you have a Reinhardt, you, you kind of know what the player is playing for, right? The shield creates space, right? You, you create space just because the shield exists. And with someone like Roadhog, um, they create space because of the threat of the hook, right? It's not even something that's necessarily, mm -hmm. it's implied threat, right? It's not um exactly directly displayed so 
I mean, what is the idea for a tank? Do you still want there to be the mix of there sort of being that implied threat plus obviously a, a very visible threat? Uh, you know, has it changed the way you think about how tanks create spaces now? Obviously, all tanks have to be able to do that to some degree, regardless if they have a shield or not. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, obviously, uh, also impacts new hero design, working new heroes, how they're going to act with creating space and defending their team. Um, certainly, looking at... Uh, you know, Arisa's not being played here for a reason because we're looking at her really heavily. Sure. Um, any any hero that has sort of that, that just the really kind of heavy static slow defense are the ones we're kind of trying to hit the hardest first. Um, and then, you know, just that alone already makes Roadhog shine a little bit because he's not being compared to the huge barrier Reinhardt. Um, but certainly, oh yeah, well, <laughs> should have healed there first probably, but you know, he went for it. Um, yeah, so like, there's a lot of changes we can make now in this world that would have been really scary to make before, um, mm -hmm. especially in regards to cooldowns. Uh, so like, Roadhog used to have a much sl uh, faster hook way back in the day. Um, maybe we could bring that back, uh, especially in a world where all the tanks are pretty aggressive. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel like it's super crazy. Uh, we still want to make sure there's enough like counterplay. You want to feel like we made him dodge the hook, and then we had no opportunity to attack, and just hooked again right afterwards. So it's certainly a balancing act, but um, a lot of the the tank. Uh, sort of tankiness can be just in the, the hero themselves now because if you get to go in and be threatening like with all this extra damage and just be hard to kill you are just creating space by existing <laughs> what an animal obviously um super i'm curious to get your opinion here obviously it's someone who plays tank right and you know you, you'll play uh you know main tank as we call it or off tank what, what is it that makes you sort of feel most powerful when you're playing tank Right, because obviously the, all the heroes offer something so different to each of them both. Could you, could right. you narrow it down to something? What makes you feel like um, MTD feel, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, well, I feel like a lot of it comes down to like decision making, right? And a lot of that currently is kind of based off of the fact of what your second tank is doing, which is obviously, uh, you know, no longer a thing because mm -hmm. there's a removal. Um, and I feel like this is really going to have to rely a lot more on like your support's keeping you a lot more alive as opposed to like your off tank or secondary tank, you know, being in, in coordination with you. Um, because the supports now, they only have to focus on, on one tank in particular. Um, mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, having to split it between two. And I, I feel like that's probably gonna have to give a lot more... Tanks are gonna have to play a lot more, I guess, assertive mm -hmm. because they can't really rely on on their other tank to, to make the decisions for them or like to you know help them out in that way i feel like it definitely changed i i know you know there's, there's a, a good handful of players who you know their, their selection of tank really boils down to their capacity to to deal damage uh mm -hmm. you know like a lot of like you got you you'll see them right you, you get these weird sort of sigmas are your comps or you see like a lot of people just like playing roadhog that's their favorite tank because he does damage um you know, trying to make you know a, a player feel powerful on tank without just doing damage requires you to really think much more about game design. Oh so my. that's what I kind of wonder. You like oh. outside of just doing a ton of damage, how do you sort of balance a tank to make them feel powerful without just pumping numbers into their primary fight? <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I think that's probably a design philosophy uh, that I'm maybe not <laughs> qualified to talk about. Um, but that's actually, well, I don't know. that's because I, mean, I wasn't actually asking you, but you can weigh in on it okay, first. Okay, yeah, I'll stop speaking. That's good. No, that's good. I'll stop speaking. <laughs> I'm curious where you're getting this, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it's, like, we're talking about with just options, and, like, you know, as you mentioned, like, we just want to make sure that, I mean, that's the, kind of the point of the Zarya change, is just giving her more flexibility and more options. So, I mean, it happens to be she also generates a crap lot more energy yeah. and is way scarier, does more damage in this case. Uh, we may have to rein that in a little bit. It, she was already running out in that last a little bit there with like 80 percent and then 100 percent so you can see it's pretty pretty aggressive but um yeah it's definitely just trying to create um really interesting playmaking opportunities and just strategic thought and i think that's where a lot of people kind of like to have the tanks exist where it's if you really want to just click heads there are probably better options out there i don't think i don't think we're likely to make any kind of like sniper tank out there or anything like mm -hmm. that because you know there's a lot of other opportunities for that um we'd like to try to keep the tanks like like i was mentioning with the crowd control changes as an example of this we like to keep the tanks being the ones who are primarily able to do crowd control and that's also with only being one tank now it means still there's gonna be a lot less crowd control in the game uh, in general but still allow them to, to sort of flex that particular element Right, so you talk about obviously 
taking a little bit of that away from me but obviously it's still something that you know you feel like you could include in the game it almost feels like it's a, you know, a more moderated approach to it now because tanks can can be the ones that bear a lot of that sort of crowd control uh potential it just means that there's you know now it's just that one hero on the battlefield that really is able to produce so much of that outside of you know five different forms that are coming in so it, it feels like almost exactly. responsibility as a as a as a tank player is is almost kicked up a notch there because you you got to be a jack of all trades yeah. in some cases especially if crowd control gets reduced to a point where you're looking for a, to counter something specific like you're looking for Genji Blade, then you know is ready, and you're you need to let's say you're playing Hog, you like really want to land that hook when he comes in. Um, it's a really big game changer if you land it. Um, so sort of like make sure it's up, and then you save it, and try to keep an eye on him. Um, and conversely, if you're a character who is really watching for you know like Reaper or something like that, wants to get his ult off, but you want to make sure you're not going to get stunned, it's a lot easier to sort of track who who's can stop you. you know, you're looking for their tank and looking for. Um, rather than looking at the whole enemy team. It's kind of like when you're Zarya trying to ult and you, you're watching Diva really close because you don't want to have it eaten. And that's what you're most concerned with as far as timing goes. It's like that with more CC in general. This guy's it. nuts on Roadhog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even with sort of, yeah, less knockback, Ryan obviously being as close as he was to the whole hog just sort of gets knocked away. Um, I, I sort of remember, I almost it was almost like a tooltip text loading into game uh, sort of playing overwatch that sort of said like listen out for footsteps like the heavier footsteps mean your opponent is potentially oh, yeah. more dangerous to you <laughs> but it definitely feels like <laughs> you know the weight of these weapons is much more effectively conveyed right if i'm listening here as, as we're sort of talking um like that scrap gun sounds extremely meaty <laughs> i love the weapon sounds yeah he's done such too. a great job and they uh, like, especially like Widow. soldier Oh, Widow, yeah, Widow's so yeah, great. Widow is the sort of insane. like that going sound you shoot in an open space. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's fantastic. You really feel like you're actually building a very high caliber weapon, right? That, that actually has weight and it has a, a sense of kickback and, and uh, sort of makes sound. And also, like, it, based on where you are in the map, you know, the environment, it, you know, I think this is maybe covered, I think, this one online as well, but it really feels like the environment we were inside, you know, club, um, in Lucio's club beforehand, and that echo is really much more apparent, right? That, yeah, environment playing a big role in how things sound. And being on the receiving end of Widowmaker's shot, it just feels so much more dangerous hearing the sound. So it, it helps you hide, basically. <laughs> right, yeah. Wow, team, 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 team hide in terror. That's a sorry, that's a big part of it as well. Like it's not just when you when you fire, but you know, getting hit by these these weapons and these abilities seems like it yeah, it has more of an impact. It's not like we're you know, we're, yeah. we're giving you an earthquake in your seat, but um you know, I feel like I'm, I'm almost sort of shifting in my seat as, as people are getting hit by stuff here as Doomfist lands punches. So. <laughs> Much more visceral experience, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, cool. it adds so much. I mean, there's so much done to... Um, I mean, I, I'm certainly not an audio guy, but I've talked to them a lot and what they've been working on. But I, I, they've been given the ability to create uh, more accurate sounds in, more, in, in certain spaces. So like an indoor tighter area or an indoor wider area can have different sounds and get that sort of sound of things bouncing off the walls and it's 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 so epic and not only does it make the game feel a lot better as far as like your weapons and getting shot at but like it actually makes the environment feel a lot better because you feel more connected like you're actually in that space just the way yeah. all the sounds are playing when you're in that space the immersion of the environment too that's just the sounds of the environment is Oh yeah, it's beautiful now. <laughs> if we could just walk through without all the bullets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only yeah, exactly right. Not so tranquil, I guess, when you're when you're fighting for your life with uh, nine other right. people. Superman. I mean, naturally, you know, th these are changes that you know some of them you thought about before. Obviously, having played so much tank, and maybe you wish for some of these. And uh, you know, I'd love to get some of your final thoughts here on sort of how tank is going to feel and heading into Overwatch Two. As I'm sure you'll be uh, you'll be strapped in and and uh, playing. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I feel like I have to get a chance to play it first. But uh, yeah. based on what based on what I've seen, it looks like, uh, you know, Tang's gonna have a lot more pressure. I feel like, or a lot more of a role, uh, to play because you know you don't really have that second, uh, that second tank to help you out and and you know kind of help clean up your mistakes, if you will. Like you know, if you get hooked, <laughs> you get a bubble or Matrix or you know whatever it may be. Uh, so I feel like in general, it looks like Tang's are gonna have to play a lot smarter. Um. But you do get the plus side of having both supports only focus on you as opposed to having two. So I think it'll be interesting. 
Well, uh, uh, we're interested to hear some of your thoughts, of course, as the live stream goes. And uh, as we get further and further down the uh, development roadmap as well, as some of these changes get fleshed out even more super. Thank you very much for joining us, mate. Obviously, I'll be seeing you soon once the, the shock get back on the battlefield. Uh, but good to have you here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Super. Thanks. And uh, that was, of course, was uh, Matthew Super Delisi, obviously tank player from the San Francisco Shock, and has given us some really good insights as well, maybe on on how it feels uh, for him to see these cha tank changes. I want to now take the opportunity to welcome to our stream, obviously prolific streamer Cupcake. Obviously, we see you playing a multitude of FPS titles, including Overwatch. Uh, great to have you with us, Cupcake. A, a lot of news today. Thanks. We're continuing to tease more out of these devs slowly. I'd love to get some of your thoughts on what we have so far. Oh man, I really like seeing all the new like hero looks and like the map visuals and the UI updates have been really cool, especially as like a support player. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of little like UI updates for like support heroes and I'm really excited about them. So yeah. Absolutely. You and me both, obviously I'm a support main as well. So I'm looking forward to teasing yeah. a little bit more uh, out of our out of our devs. Not only of course about maybe supports, but a little bit more about Overwatch 2. And of course, yes, we will be showing uh, another map in just a moment. So let's take the opportunity Yay. to uh, to sort of bring uh, these these devs back in, of course. Obviously, uh, Jeff and Dion have given us some uh, great thoughts so far because something that was teased at BlizzCon Online uh, and we got to see a little bit of was actually the hero looks, right? Overwatch 2 is, you know, it's, it's a game that's set a little bit further sort of in the future as far as we can tell. And this is reflected in what the heroes actually look like. I don't know if Dion, Jeff, if you can sort of speak to that because uh, it's not just a, like a, a, a jazzy tech upgrade, but something, you know, we can see the passage of time being implied with some of these new looks. Yeah, that, for that's part of it is the passage of time. You can see Bro Reinhardt is a little older. I think there's a sneak peek at a few characters that um, there's a bit of age difference on them as well. A uh, bunch of guys are part of Overwatch now, so they have access to cooler tech in their outfits. <laughs> uh, it's just we're having fun kind of like in a way to show these guys have upgraded their equipment. They're ready to do battle in this new world. Uh, Fire here with their new Overwatch gear so that she has the armor that fits the Overwatch team. Uh, yeah, and just Reaper is pretty amazing as well. There's definitely a feeling of them looking sort of more high tech in a sense as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I love that you kind of, you kind of, uh, this is cheeky, you're kind of teasing uh, a little bit to the story or how the world changes out as we go. <laughs> so that's just, you know, building my appetite up to, to sort of see more about how the world is changing and, and what all these heroes mm -hmm. are up to. I mean, you see obviously Widowmaker's got a change of hairstyle as well. Um, tell us about what the development process on these, on these changes is like, because I think it was sort of mentioned that there's sort of new tech available to developers to sort of bring these characters to life. But I'd love to know how you go about refreshing or revamping or update some of these hero looks. Yeah, we have a lot of cool, very, really cool engine up, upgrades that you could see in some of those shots. A lot of better detail, the character's skin feel more natural. Their hair has a really awesome shader and it just, it, you know, it's still stylized, but it just feels much more real, almost like you could touch it. Uh, this is in the environments as well. There's tons of nice detail. We've upgraded the lighting engine. So shadows are better. All these things are just to make the world feel much more immersive, more dynamic and more animated things in the world. Uh, the characters have the cool tech gear and details that we weren't able to do before until we kind of turn tune some knob, knobs in the engine mm -hmm. and so we're suddenly playing with this maintaining overwatch style keeping the game performance smooth but you know upgrading everything to the overwatch 2 level i'm curious about like the new the new upgrades to the skins and like just the heroes themselves and you guys have all the skins from all the different heroes from overwatch and like how challenging it is to bring them mm -hmm. in and like update their looks as well. Like, is that an easy process or is it like tedious to make them all look just as good? That's a great question. Um, so a lot of the tech we, for example, the skin shader will apply to all the older skins as well. So nice. our engine team is working hard to 
kind of create a workflow that's easier for the artists but it's still <laughs> there's there's a level of work there but everything you see on these new 2.0 heroes the updated hair shaders updated skin uh detail maps these will all carry over to the older um heroes or the older skins so a lot of stuff looks even better than it did before um, yeah i can only imagine there's yeah. a bit of work there to, to apply some of the new new um techniques to those guys but it's a beautiful upgrade to practically every single skin in the game so it, it, yeah. it'll be fun for players to see is it going to be possible to like add more customization like with this new technology like unlocking different like color schemes or something like that or like special weapon variations even question. for like certain achievements or something like that so we have more ways to customize the way our heroes look an amazing question but i <laughs> you have to wait and see oh no what about like mixing and matching like skins and weapons is that going to be possible like mm, using a weapon one. from yeah, one skin because oh. yeah. like that would be so much fun like you get right. creative with that can you imagine like oh man now, I mean, uh, we're, okay. we're already, we're theory crafting, you know, we're off to the races here already. I can't <laughs> like, so, I'm like, oh, so many ideas. Theo, There's you, a lot of fun stuff in store. Yeah. You do have something new uh, to it's show It's like my favorite though. part is the visual, so. Well, speaking of yeah. which, Cupcake, okay, Dion has uh, a new hero book to show us. Dion, do you want to talk us through this one? Oh, yeah. So, this one will be, I think he's a Torbjorn. Yeah. So, this is Torbjorn 2.0. You can see he's, nice. a little, he's a little older. He has a bit better technology and gear. And yeah, he's a, the Torbjorn we all know and love. He's just much more in advanced. Uh, he has a cool... Very new, cool. Uh, you can see the hair shader really well on his uh, beard. But like imagine that, but with like his summer skin like weapon. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's the kind of stuff I want to see at some point. Like... <laughs> So yeah. that I mean, you can you can definitely see. I mean, some of the some of the changes are big, right? They're vibrant, and obviously, you know, you can definitely see yeah, the passage of time great. in twelve. And some are subtle, you know. It's the it's the patches on the knees of his jeans. It's the mm -hmm. connectors between the hardware that he's using, uh, the goggles that he has. Um, and it, uh, I mean, you can, mm -hmm. right. we can see this gregarious uh, attitude from him very clearly displayed. Though I think that's very much still been brought to life. That's, and, you know, we want to upgrade the characters, but we don't want to lose that silhouette that's familiar to players, you know? Mm -hmm. He still looks like Torbjorn from a distance. He just looks better and more detailed up close, but it, he maintains that silhouette we come to know and love and like to shoot at. So um, that's uh, some of the... Extra, extra props to the VFX team for doing some, like, the next uh, kind of 2.0 VFX on his, on his pack there. It looks great. Right. To smoke coming off. Yeah, it's a serious modernization of of you know no, uh, yeah not just obviously how his skins look but how he behaves in the game and how he interfaces with the world that he's put in let's let's shift gear here and talk a little bit more uh, about our next map rome was teased at blizzcon online right we've got these beautiful panoramas these coliseum looking things it's like sort of mm -hmm. this sort of future rome but um that is that's obviously uh coming up next and it needs a push map so i want to talk a little bit more about how a push map is actually developed right the newest game type to the game um gives some really unique situations to play through uh, let, let's delve in a, d a bit deeper i have to assume right like there's there has to be some symmetry to the map it, i'm sure that's is that sort of right what, we, okay let's what's important when designing a push map let's start there so symmetry is obviously the number one important part it, it makes it very competitive because both sides have a similar layout but it also makes it tough to create a second one so you had toronto that we saw earlier where it was a more of an s-curve layout to the battle in rome you'll see it's kind of a c you kind of cut through the coliseum it becomes tighter when you reach the robot once you see the players play this one was where we really found the way okay this is how we make iterations on push it, it at first the s curve was a an easy one to go to you know it's make the map snake through mm -hmm. buildings and things but how do we switch it up for a different space and we knew we wanted to make rome we knew we wanted to go through the coliseum so that's kind of part of the initial design for this version of the push map but it's a very fun mode especially on um 
in Rome. I, I think that the thematic of the scene plus pushing the robot kind of enhances how fun this game type is. It's, it's such a crazy juxtaposition between all the sci-fi movies that you might watch and then a location that is obviously known yeah. to us and sort of thinking about how, mm -hmm. you know, the, the passage of time might change it. I want to know, um, you know, you, you mentioned, the first thing you mentioned, Dion, I feel like was that like, it's very competitive as a result of that symmetry. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and you guys as the developer team on Overwatch have had a good chance to see how so many of these maps play out at the highest competitive level. So I'm curious to know, like, you know, how much is our Overwatch, rather, Overwatch League a factor when you're sort of considering a, a game type or a map design like this, you know? How often do you think, oh, like, how the players could break this or, you know, they're going to sort of, you know, go for the 1% plays on this kind of map? Is, does that factor into the dev process all that much? Um, I, think so. I think Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff could probably I mean, answer this, man. Yeah, I mean, they... Um, certainly, I feel like it's hard to uh, imagine a, a player base sort of breaking a map apart probably as much as the Overwatch teams, the Overwatch League teams do. Um, and they will find that stuff fast and they've used even the smallest things. Um, so yeah, I mean, we definitely, as far as like the, the, the specific layout, we're looking at a lot of stuff uh, quite a bit, but especially when we're developing a new mode, um, it's very much taken into account how competitive it's going to be. And as mm -hmm. was brought up earlier, um, you know, based on the rule set, we want to make sure if we can avoid it, we want to avoid any kind of tie situation. Sure. Um, this. This mode certainly prevents that. Um, and then, as Aaron was talking about earlier, like we were debating whether or not this should be like kind of easy to push to the end, and then you know you get a point, and then the other team can you know maybe it's multiple rounds, and each mm -hmm. push is one point. But then it's like you get in that potential tie situation, and there's the, you lose some of that sort of sort of epic tension of um, pushing it those last little bits, and people fighting over those little bits of space. And um, so, I think uh, yeah, I mean, we're very cognizant of that, especially with new modes thinking about how they're going to be played and competitive. We had so many uh, matches that came down to two, three meters. This oh, is yeah. such a fun, just you feel good even losing. You know, you're like, that was a great <laughs> yeah. battle because it felt like we fought really hard for those last two, three uh -huh. meters. This map is genetically engineered for play-by-play -play casters. I like that. More opportunities for us to just <laughs> yell nonsense. Uh, we're going to jump in and, and check this one out. Got, we've got a bunch more questions. I'm sure, Kaka, you do as well here. But, I mean, first impression is, is wow. This is an incredible vista. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, thank you. Wow. Absolutely stunning stuff. We, we talked about, you know, Dion, you mentioned like the S shape sort of uh, thing. But it looks like this. there's some twists and turns here. It's almost like the... The path yeah. overlaps itself as well at some points. It does. There's a little bit of C shape, and then there's this bridge overpass that's pretty fun to encounter. I, I think uh, I'm curious to see how this battle plays out once the players get to the overpass. We'll be starting to yeah, I feel like the two big features on this map, and we'll see it right away, is the first one is right in the uh, under the Coliseum, basically where the uh, where the uh, other two are. <laughs> the bot starts and uh that it's it you know it kind of like um looks sort of simple in ge basic geometry but is like the the, the subtlety there is because yeah. it's got a slight curve to it the whole time yeah. it's so amazing and you can see certain of these are blocked off and certain of them are open um as far as in between the pillars and that was actually iterated on quite a bit i remember um opening them up closing them in fact you see the tops are actually open so you can climb over or fly over them so we still allow some flanking routes if you're like a pharaoh or genji and you want to get cheeky um but we didn't want to close it off entirely so that one section was sort of everyone's favorite right away in playtesting um and then just the med a massive amount iteration on it was great right so we'll see it here that quality of life trains on Winston's bubble it does not go unnoticed, by the way. The duration of the bubble remaining, uh, being shown on the HUD is, is huge. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that... that the, it's funny watching... Sorry, I mean, I just love the curvature, actually, sort of... It actually reduces line of sight, right? So you cannot yep, now mm -hmm. just sit at one end of this, this sort of track and see the other if you're a sniper. So even that small tweak, you know, has balance implications that I'm sure... You've thought right. about to quite a great degree. I think um, because me and Cupcake are both support mains, I think something we we're definitely gonna be wanting to talk about here is that it's not just Senyata's HUD that's that's gotten a change, right? It seems like every sport looks a little bit different when it comes to the HUD and some of those abilities that interact with teammates. Yeah, which like there's even the Zen placement of the orbs, uh, it's so much better, like more in the middle rather than having it on this side. Oh, yeah. um, I think that's really nice. I've noticed like the little 
changes with like having mercy like it shows when mercy is healing somebody a lot more clearly mm -hmm. and i like having the the icons of who it's on you know um i like the i, I wish to see more with um anna like i would love to see with anna having it show like who she slept like on oh. the ui oh that's a cool idea yeah like that would be that. so cool Especially because, you know, I feel like I have to tell my DPS player that's in the enemy backline. I don't know if you yeah. saw that, but I just mm -hmm. let the fire out of the air and they just I know, I'm like, I slept someone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. Or sometimes you throw one, you don't know who it hit, like, you're because there's so much going on. You're like, okay, I definitely slept someone, but I'm not sure who it was. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be important to know. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite part. You sleep you sleep again to you accidentally with a blade and someone just wakes them up because they have no idea. That, that you yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. them, right? Exactly. Oh, no. no. And obviously, you also, you as a player get indication if Mercy is healing or damage boosting you, right? Obviously, your screen sort of, in, in on live, your screen sort of takes on like a sort of a very slight non-intrusive glow. But it seems here you've mm -hmm. also changed mm -hmm. how it's indicated to you that Mercy is is sort of damage boosting you. Is that also the case with like um, a nano boost, for example? Oh, I can't remember if we've actually changed the, the 1P nano, nano boost effect. I don't think um, we have yet. Gotcha. But the, in general, there's like, you know, great big passes going across. Uh, I mean, really across the team. I mean, you can see the, the skin passes and those emails get sent out all the time. Like, oh, look at these cool you know, skin changes and, you know, tech we're getting. And then there's also VFX updates. Look at the VFX changes we're making and sound, of course. So it's kind of just awesome being like, even if I'm not directly, you know, working on that stuff, just sort of seeing that stuff crossing my email and the examples being sent out. It's just awesome, like day to day. Seeing all the changes. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure your your inbox is sort of swarmed with them. Um, I I sort of wonder what what the, oh, look. It was mentioned at uh, BlizzCon Online as well that sort of the assault game mode sort of there wouldn't be sort of further maps developed for right. The focus would no longer sort of be on that. So I'd love to know what the sort of thought process is between sort of the removal of assault or two CP as it's fondly known uh, and the addition of push here. Right, so that that has a long history, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that probably was uh, probably most of the people who really follow the game closely are aware. Um, we've uh, obviously the, the uh, assault map or TCP, as it's called. Um, a lot of people had a lot of concerns with it, and we've tried to make a lot of changes to it. Um, in fact, what people might not know is um, we've gone through multiple phases of like a heavy overhaul of it, but none of them ever really were good enough to go even to experimental card, honestly. Um, we, we've, I always feel bad because one time we had, I had a new designer join and one of the first things we gave him was like, overhaul 2CP, what yeah. do you want to do? And it was like, the hardest problem ever, go ahead and solve it, new guy. It was like, oh, that's kind of rough actually, in retrospect. Uh, but uh, so, you know, we, we've got a lot of, went through a lot of changes and um, it got to the point where we were like, we'd have to make so many changes to get this where we want it to be. Like, is it even the same mode anymore? And at that point, if we're getting to that degree, why don't we just make a different right. mode? Yeah, let's make new. new. Why even try to, like, yeah. you know, change it to that degree? So that's kind of how that ended up going about and coming about. And um, a lot of it was feedback from the players. So that's kind of spicy, Jeff. You're trying to say that there's other modes in development. Are you trying to imply that? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that we're, we are constantly experimenting with new modes. With their, their experimentation right now. How crazy in New York was. Sorry, Dion, please. Oh, sorry. New York was. We experimented a lot with New York before landing on the mode that we chose. I mean, um, it seems like and, so many possibilities for that kind of map, right? Right. Uh, Temple of Anubis, when we first showed that at BlizzCon, the shipping version actually changed, you know, to try to fix 2CB even back when the game first came right. out. Uh, yeah. So, we actually the version we show shared and the version that shipped with the game was pretty different from the choke point standpoint to try to address some of the two cp challenges so we just left that spot in the map oh sorry you know, I cut yeah you off. and that was it yeah oh okay um i was just gonna comment because we were there although they just left it but the other thing i was mentioning about this map because i mentioned two things is that area we, we just left was it's like this like corkscrew mm -hmm. basically uh, and it's it super interesting yeah, it like goes up, it basically flips on itself and goes over itself, and uh, you can see it coming up here. Um, so you go under, in this case you go to the right, and then back up and then cross over itself. Mm -hmm. um, it is a really interesting point to play. In fact, when we were first playing it, I remember we had our first feedback session where it was like, 
I don't know if I like this or not. It's either right. amazing or it's terrible. I can't even tell. <laughs> like it's it's super interesting and very impactful. Uh, and so we were like, I think that means we keep going with it, keep play testing it, and keep iterating. So. Uh, obviously, having a big impact is almost more important if you can get the, the, the good stuff of it. Um, so, after a lot of iteration, it's 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 definitely persisted. It's become kind of the most interesting spot to play around because it's, it's a lot like, of drama there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The flanks you can flank from on top to drop down below because you have to go under this pass. And if you just sit in the middle of that pass as Reaper or something like that and just drop down, of course you yeah. got to worry about going to be jumping up on you or something. Um, there's actually a little wall on the right you can climb up right there. Um, if you're uh, a character that can climb or a grapple or something. So it's just like this, when you're going through that, after playtesting this map enough and playing it enough, when you're going under that pass, it's the most like anxiety inducing <laughs> spot. <laughs> it's just like, especially when it's like calm for a while at first, because like, you know, after a fight and you're going, there's no sounds, you're like, okay, what is about to happen here? Where are they going to be coming from? And it's like, there's a sneaky little frustrated. alleyway in there too, a, a tiny one shoot yeah, under the bridge. Right. There's an alleyway there. Reaper 76, you, there's a lot of uh, so it's fun like encounters. Gibraltar, right? you, you go through that first little underpass and it, you just know it's a little too quiet. You know, you know that yeah. <laughs> someone's right. going to show up and clap you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm loving this. It looks like, I mean, the, the verticality difference between sort of playing in this initial sort of bend and then outside on the corkscrews is, is huge. Like you, you'd have to sort of switch columns almost to try and make the most of it. Cupcake, you, we've seen now uh, a good, decent bit of Rome. I'd love to get some more of your thoughts here. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love all the like arch architecture and everything in it. I was fascinated when I was watching the the preview during the Blizz Online on it. And um, I would, you know, love to get in there and like just go explore it and look around and like figure out like what the best way to go about this is because there's a lot to it. It's it's a little confusing, like looking at it from like this perspective, but I'm sure once you get in there and you actually like play it, it makes a lot more sense, you know, mm -hmm. even with even at 5v5. Yeah, you, you definitely have the feeling of like franticness or hecticness, you know, sort of around the body. Yeah, exactly. And this, this yeah. seems like a game mode that's catered to like giving these like adrenaline sort of pumping moments of overtime, right? Um, oh, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of yeah, overtime moments. What I love though is that these buildings don't just seem for decoration. Like even look up at the top right side, right? Like all these buildings you can go in. There's so many, so many more of these nooks and crannies that you can actually mm -hmm. explore. That seems like a way more intensive exactly. map design process yes. as well, because you have to think of everything. You cannot leave a stone unturned when you sort of turn this tapestry exactly. into, you know, something vibrant like this. Incredible stuff. There it is. So cool. Right, that was your first look of obviously at some gameplay on Rome. A beautiful map and my god yeah i really think that uh those shot callers out there are gonna have to be thinking a mile a minute just how they can take advantage of the sort of topography of the map uh, as it sort of changes <laughs> uh really exciting stuff i mean we've we already sort of got a feel for the game mode but it's crazy just how different i, I don't know if you feel the same cupcake how different this feels from toronto even though it's the same game type but the map sort of changes the feel and the flow so much it does yeah it definitely feels a lot different um i don't play it like a high end like skill level so i'm curious how it's gonna work on somebody on like my level like i'm like the average overwatch player you know oh, I'm not, like, <laughs> top 500 <laughs> I'm, not GM. Like, I'm plat you know a lot, a lot of my overwatch experience as a support like i solo queue support mm -hmm. You know, like it's the struggle is real. And so my experience <laughs> is like, you know, I have my tanks, my tanks are just like Leroy Jenkins in and I'm like, OK, here we go. And I'm just trying to like keep up, you know, so I'm curious, you know, how that's going to go on like as like plat games, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'm going to find out because I sure as heck won't be playing in any other rank than plat myself. Uh, that's what I'm going to be <laughs> <Me too. laughs> experiencing. Hey, really quickly. we So y'all know how I feel. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like I said, you're in good company. I'll make, I'll make uh, no bones about uh, my standing in the game. That was incredible. Uh, thank you, Jeff and Dion, for walking us through Rome. Uh, we we started from that sort of vibrant sort of overlook and then we were straight into the action. I, I really love just the, the juxtaposition of sort of the futuristic tech plus a, a really historic location uh, and that's a lot of fun. We, I mean, speaking of incredible locations, we actually still have one more map to show everybody. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> stick around. There's still more to come. Uh, a new map, an in-depth look that you haven't heard anything about. Coming up on the other side of this break, so stick around for more of this Overwatch 2 PVP developer live stream. <laughs> Oh, 
起走。Welcome back, everybody, as uh, we get ready for our final map of the day. Uh, thanks to Mitch. Thanks to all the other uh, content creators that dropped by the stream. It was uh, a ton of fun to have them. Back to the back to the, the original crew, though. Uh, as I know, uh, a lot has changed, obviously, uh, with Overwatch 2's PvP. Uh, from I mean, a lot changed with Overwatch 1's PvP throughout the eternity, but I think like this is a, a pretty drastic kind of change from what the players are used to at home. Uh, I guess for the players at home now, like, uh, you know, what can the expectations be? You no, know, obviously, like you guys have mentioned, a lot of this is still work in progress. Yeah, that's a great, it's a, it's a great point to bring up. And I think it's, um, it's important to recognize that while we're really excited about a lot of the changes that we're making to the game, I think there's probably a lot of people, you know, watching the stream um, that can't help but wonder how it, how it's going to affect them, you know, and, and, um, like we have a lot of tank players in the game. We have a lot of off tank players in the game. Um, and something that you that you said resonates with me, where Overwatch has changed over the years. Um, we talked about you know before we had hero limits or before we had roll lock. You know like goats was a very popular part of Overwatch for a long time, where there, it was people were actually running three tanks instead of two tanks and i think one of the one of the things that that has always been a part of overwatch is, is the game does change over time um and i know that for some people um the, it it's probably jarring to to look at a change like this you know or, or maybe it's it's a little bit shocking because um any any time a big change like this happens and you start settling settling into like a pattern of in, uncertainty or fear, you, you really translate it within your current context. Um, but the the game will continue to evolve and continue to shift. The the shift from um, the shift into Rolock, it, it changed some of the some of the meta of the game. Yeah. Um, and now people look at the role of of or all of the roles a little different than they did than they did previously. And I think that that is a natural result of something like this. And so it might be easy to say like, well, I'm an off tank player. How is this going to affect me as an off tank player? And I get that there are there's strategy there and there's synergies between some of these tanks. But if you're an off tank player, if, if you're a, a D.Va player or a Zarya player, you can still be a diva or a Zarya player. And what we're hoping is, is when you get in the game, because a lot of this is about how it feels to play those heroes. When you get in and actually feel what it's like to play as as Zarya or Diva, you'll come away um, really enjoying the experience. It, yeah, I think one thing you mentioned, which is a really good shout, is that, yeah, like you're, you kind of view this in the context of like 
how you have it now, right? Where you're like, mm -hmm. well, wait, like if I just had you no know, 5v5 today, like how would I how would I do like Zarya or, you know, how it may work. But uh, I think to some of the stuff that you guys have spoken to, especially you, Jeff, like there's just so many changes that go on with the heroes <laughs> that are involved with this that, yeah, like I, I think to your point, Aaron, like you really once you get a feel of it, that's when you really kind of it sets in. Yeah, it's and it, it is a big overhaul. We get that it's a that it's a big overhaul, but at the same time, it still feels like Overwatch when you're playing Overwatch. Like the heroes all still feel amazing and incredible. You have these great plays. There is still a ton of strategy for your team and everybody on it um, to to use. And so I I understand that it's a big change, but this is still like this is still the same game that that we've been playing all along. Yeah, it keeps all those core aspects that everybody loves about Overwatch, yeah. but you know, just, yeah, just kind of like changes a little bit of the core and push it forward. Uh, the final map we have today, uh, Dion, and uh, that when, when, when we were going over like, what are we going to show today and like some of the maps, I was like, this map needs to be last uh, <laughs> because they <it> just <laughs> like absolutely stunning. Uh, Monte Carlo, talk to me a little bit about it. Okay, so Monte Carlo and another map where it's this beautiful, opulent, the wealthy in the Overwatch universe go oh, here to man. play, you know? Uh, flying yachts, casinos, luxury hotels, AI F1 races. It's, it's, we're another map. We're having a lot of fun just applying this Overwatch aesthetic to the world and the, this universe in Monte Carlo or Monaco. So. Uh, and this also has a nice story connection to the overall um, story of Overwatch 2, so look out for that as uh, we share more later. But yeah, it's, the, it's it's just gorgeous. I mean, and the one thing that strikes me about this map, and I, I think you guys can obviously speak to the best, is that each point and area of the map plays so drastically different. Uh, you know, once we'll actually see it in play, but. Uh, is that something that you guys are looking at with map design of just like how you guys can change like verticality, levels of terrain, really, you know, em empower certain heroes or certain roles to really kind of take advantage of that? We're definitely doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the Overwatch 2 maps have features in them that we, that we haven't built before. Um, everyone just got a, a look at Rome. And we have that sort of um, sort of like switchback section in it, or or like the the loop section, and and that was something we tried three or four times over the entire course of Overwatch <laughs> devel development, and we're just never able to get it to work right. And and on Rome, we we feel like we finally cracked the code on something like that. Um, in in Monte Carlo, there is this really cool uphill section in the map. Um, and it's it's steeper and, and longer than anything we've done before, um, and so there's a lot of um, like difference in elevation there, um, and, and I feel like it it kind of just speaks to um, some of the some of the changes that we're willing to make um, with this game in order to, to introduce new gameplay and to have it feel fresh and, and vibrant for players. Yeah, I definitely think we can start off that final map. We can keep this discussion going because that was one of the first things that I noticed about this map. I was like, oh, like we're going, we're going straight. I was like, oh, this feels like, you know, very like, you know, classic Overwatch. Like here, here's the choke. And then all of a sudden we're going up. And I was like, I, <laughs> I, I can't remember a map, you know, maybe even I think people when they see it probably would compare to like, I know I can vault when you're kind of going around the castle, mm. but it's even steeper than that. Like, uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, you're looking at it and you're like, oh, man, how are they getting up there? Like, uh, it, it, it's such a cool dynamic, though. Yeah, definitely. And um, Eichenwald's a great example of it, but uh, of, of rising through a map. But this one doesn't have a large structure in the middle of it. So you're you're going up this really big elevation and it's all open. Um, and so there's a lot more interplay between the two teams as they're trying to push up the up the hill. And I, I love Dion, the, the spawn rooms uh, with the cars and <laughs> everything. It's just so cool as, uh, yeah, you just kind of see both of these teams, uh, you know, come out of the spawn, just a, a lot of detail. I love leaning into the F1 uh, when, when you have like the kind of car going around the track, uh, even the checkpoints is being, you know, kind of like your, uh, uh, your kind of checkpoint, how they would be in like a race. Mm -hmm. uh, as yeah you see this so this first point is uh really interesting i i think for a lot of people is 
you know, where, where we'll see Zarya on defense it's like a, a solo tank like you can you can play so many different ways right uh I've I've seen people play like really close up by like some of these staircases a little bit further back you can play the snipers up on the bridge you can play like soldier up on the bridge I think uh just adds so much more dynamics to play yeah and you definitely. can see the um payload is uh another we're having fun with the payload here it's a AI driven f1 car or uh, race so in uh you know creating the the escort maps how does that different from you know some of the other things you guys are working on you know like push uh you know like uh you know hybrids controls like uh is there a different type of philosophy when going into star like a map uh you know for escort versus some of those other modes yeah there's a lot of a lot of differences mm -hmm. between these types of modes and when you when you do map design on overwatch like one of the things you always have to think about is is where the spawn rooms are going to be and how you're going to get out of the spawn rooms and obviously it's it's different coming out of a spawn room is different on a payload map than any of our other map types because you immediately start interacting with the objective um the one of the toughest things about developing payload maps for overwatch is the entire route needs to be like a certain minimum width just to mm -hmm. be able to get the payload to fit through it. And usually you want to have enough space on the sides of it so that you can move around. Um, there, we do have a few tight sections in our maps, but they're very short. Like right mm -hmm. after you get the payload in King's Row, it gets very tight, but that's, that's for a short period of time. And so when you do start making these wider areas, it becomes very difficult to control sight lines. And it gets it gets easy to make very long sight lines through the map where it no longer really feels like an Overwatch map anymore because we really try to control those things. I um, mean, I think it's why you see that a lot of the payload maps, they, they do weave back and forth a lot. And so much of that is about controlling sight lines and then also presenting like difficult areas for, for a team to push through. Oh, this is the hilly yeah, so section. Yeah, yeah, so I was gonna say that's the that's the area of verticality where, like, uh, there's a, a sniper perch up here to kind of like that uh, you know right hand side if we're looking at it. But yeah, just uh, this poses so many different obstacles for teams. But I also think it's it's kind of presents multiple ways to play where uh, you see right now both teams playing the Zarya, but like you could play really fast and kind of dive up onto the high ground. Like you could play really slow, kind of work your way around. It's, uh, it, it, this team is just actually kind of just rolling on through. This, <laughs> this, this, uh, Zarya seems to be the tank choice of the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you like can I said, see, that change is pretty new. <laughs> you can see from a visual standpoint that uh, um, when making a payload map, they're pretty large maps for an Overwatch space. So we want the visuals to kind of change as players complete objectives. The world looks different to them. You know, they, there was it was flat before and then you reached the first objective and now you're on the hill and they'll move into the hotel for the final objective so there's this visual progression to kind of your completing objectives and you feel like you're making progress through the map because the world around you is somewhat changing as it goes along yeah, kind of like uh like dorado almost like right you were to kind of think of uh you know a, a map from the live game where you, you kind of start through that choke area goes towards that high ground and then you have that like interior and the interior for this map is one of the cooler things that i've seen uh in overwatch and uh hopefully we'll get to see it but just the the tiering of it uh, how, how did that come about with, uh, you know, when we, we can go inside, we'll obviously have a better view of it, but, uh, it's really kind of like this multi-tiered vertical kind of like casino. It's so interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a super cool space and really fun to fight through. I think, uh, you know, over time, Overwatch map design is, has changed a little bit, just the way that the, the game has changed a little bit. Um, the, the presence or the importance of high ground really can't be understated in this game um, and so we're trying to give more of that to teams mm -hmm. um, and trying to create kind of like conflict points in some of these maps and, and who's going to control that high ground yeah no i i think obviously it's a a shooter right it, their <laughs> high ground is always right. kind of the the, the go-to uh where the, Overwatch has always had the ability for you know multiple players to take high ground, whether it's like a Hanzo, like we just saw there, like with a wall climb or a Widow. But yeah, with like a multi-tiered level like this, it allows everybody to kind of have a, some access of high ground, which 
brings into play, I know Ana really kind of effective here at the high ground with the grenades as uh, we see the payload kind of go over the line and you know, the, the car will go inside of the casino. Uh, I've seen mm -hmm. a few cars inside of casinos. In, in my day. They're usually they're usually not moving though. I think uh, 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 you know the, the, depending on how the day went, maybe they're moving. But that's just from my point of view. Uh, <laughs> this is the oh, hotel the portion of this is the hotel portion of the casino, yeah. the luxury. Casino. Yeah, and you can see the high ground in the back over there. It's actually really difficult for us to put a lot of it into our game. Um, one of the things we do in Overwatch is. Um, our stairs are very shallow, um, and we don't typically have any steep ramps in the entire game. Um, and I think the game plays better that way. It feels smoother like that, um, but it makes it so hard. That it just kills the level designers on the project trying to get people up to high ground um, because you, it takes a lot of space in order to do it. Oh, yeah, that, that's actually a really interesting point that I guess I, I've never really kind of taken a... a kind of a notice of yeah when you like yeah the stairs aren't very like these like long like windy climbs like there's kind of turns to get to that elevation uh is that just to keep everything smooth and just kind of movement predictable yep so that's part of it to so keep it smooth keep movement predictable um it's it's also like it can be um really like kind of um difficult to overcome a really steep staircase. It's almost like a wall in front of you and you don't know what's gonna be at the top of it. And so we always like for players to be able to run through our maps and to be able to look at a space and kind of develop a, a mental 3D image of where everything's going, of, of what the space is actually going to be like outside of your view. And it's easier to do that with shallower stairs. It's also easier to push up a shallower staircase and a higher staircase. And like lastly, just the way that a lot of games character physics work um it's also smoother to move on steep staircases or on on shallow staircases i was gonna say the only the only really i guess steep staircase i can think of is uh you know, the one on like horizon lunar colony uh you know on the, the first point where you're kind of going up towards the balcony mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah that that does kind of prove like the some of the things that you're talking about where I know we've all been there where a junk rat is sitting on top of the stairs with Horizon. You can't see where he's shooting you from, and you're just yeah. kind of getting pelted on the way up. Uh, it's not the, the best of feelings, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't really know what to say about that besides um, <laughs> we are moving away from 2CP. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep, the, keep the combat moving. Uh, uh, I, I love I love this area. Like you see where that soldier is sitting up top. Like mm -hmm. it, it, uh, w one of the cool things about uh, this map that I definitely saw when watching it was that like the attackers can actually like access that area. Like you can go around uh, where we see up there. Uh, yeah. yeah, curly mustache uh, <laughs> rotating around, uh, and, and and it's connected. Uh, that's something we haven't really seen in a lot of Overwatch maps. Yeah, we try to, we're, we're very intentional with the way we do flanking routes, and we, we try to make it so that at least one team, like the team can be aware of um, people that are coming on a flank. Um, and we usually don't try to let you get all the way around behind the defense without having some way of knowing that it's coming or having the offense earning something like that. Mm -hmm. And we think this one's fair. We've gone back and forth on this a lot. There, there, there's been 30 different variations of this route, but ho hopefully this one's fair. Depending on how your game goes, it's fair or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Depending on who else is in the test. Uh, I actually have some questions from uh, Twitter that uh, you know some people have been uh, pulling and just kind of uh just really i think things that people are interested in uh for you guys what change to uh you know character buff or nerf you guys most looking forward to that you guys have uh, played around implemented with thus far hmm. wow i mean that's a that's um it's a, a great lot. question you know to ask yesterday but i think now that we've <laughs> gone over um kind of gone over a lot of what we've been working on there's so many changes to characters all across the board um and in, in, including all the big changes to to the tank role the hero passives that we're introducing with with all the other roles in in the game so um as well as like the the some of the the work that we've been doing um uh with uh, like cc abilities in the game so it's, it's really hard yeah, I, to pick one of those 
Uh, my personal one is actually the one that we saw from BlizzCon Line was the Reinhardt stuff. Uh, yes, as somebody who's always wanted to play Reinhardt, who's pretty tragic at it, uh, <laughs> being able to be a little bit more, this is like selfish, uh, being able to be a little bit more brawly and more offensive uh, is the type of Reinhardt play I want. Uh, on you know when I just charge in without talking to any of my teammates currently. <laughs> yeah. work. I'm sure that, now you can I'm, do I'm, that. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that won't work in Overwatch 2 either, no. but I can at no. least put it in my mind that bit. it could be a possibility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always the promise of Reinhardt um, in any version of Overwatch that you're playing is that moment where you get to drop the shield and go in and just start laying waste to people. Feels so good. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, you know, you play Reinhardt and you come out and you feed a few times. You're like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe this isn't for me. And then you just land that one shatter, that that perfect shatter, and then you're just like, yep, I'm, yes. I'm committing. <laughs> it's, it's it's such a it's such a good uh, ability. Uh, here's another one uh, from uh, Twitter. Uh, that uh, how do you guys uh, look at maintaining the the balance between PvP and PVE? I assume they're kept like completely separate, like different environments, like. But how do you guys how, how do you guys look at that? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because uh, we talked a lot about that early when we first started developing, you know, much larger PVE games. Uh, you know, we look at a hero like Winston. Winston is super fun in PVP. But a lot of his enjoyment comes from sort of how much you're willing to commit, and there's always like this risk game you're playing. And you're taking space, but are you you know you don't want to be too far ahead of your team or your healers and you know, how you're committing and everything. But it's hard to translate that to a PvE environment, for example. So that in our early playtests of PvE, it was sort of like, it feels like he needs more. And then we started getting into like, okay, well, we really need to talk about if we're going to keep these separate or, or are we just making changes to the base hero. Um, so a lot of the, like, for instance, the, the current Winston alternate fire he has where he could shoot that blast actually came from PvE first. We were just oh, like, oh, this is a lot more fun. And like, oh, I wonder if mm -hmm. this could apply to the base kit. Plus, we're doing all the other chains of PvP. And uh, so we started playing with it in PvP. So in those cases, like, if, if it feels like it works and we, we're like enjoying playing it, yeah, we'll totally take it. But I think our general philosophy is to try to keep them separate um, just so we can make sure that they shine really great on in both the both individual game or all the game games, really. Um, yeah, and this might I did, be... I have to mention one thing really quick because it's kind of fun. <laughs> I did um, early on, I just had to make this this uh, prototype, but I, I did a prototype of like a PvP VE mode, I called it, which was like a, a hybrid <laughs> mode. Because I think like, I, I get the expectation that people will probably ask about that pretty quick if we want to do that. And so I was like, let's just try it, try a mode of it. And uh, it was a little dirty because it was like, there wasn't a lot of balancing done. It was just like, oh, let's just throw all the crazy PvE stuff in here and see how they work against players. And it was pretty tragic, but uh, it was pretty interesting. And like, let's there's maybe a version of that. Yeah, exactly. There's maybe a version that we could do with that at some point in the future, but we don't have like direct plans for that right now because it was. One thing came out of it like this is fun, but like, man, this would be a lot of work trying to balance this anywhere <laughs> mm -hmm. close to what it would have to be. Yeah, yeah we, we do a lot of experimentation like that, um, which I, I think is one of the funnest parts about working on this game. And I know, like, oh, as, as they were playing Rome, you know, there was a question of, like, hey, are we working on, like, do you work on other game modes? And it is something that we do a lot. Actually, the, the push map or the push game mode came out of a whole different game mode that, that we were working on. Um, as we were kind of trying to solve how you would put... Um, a capture the flag into like a main version of of Overwatch, and we weren't really able to do it, but push kind of came out of that. Um, and we are we are working on one other one that I'm really really excited about, um, and hopefully it's something that we'll be able to talk to talk to our players and the community about later. I, I love that. Yes. More ways to play is <laughs> yes. is, is totally fine with me, and I'm sure the rest of the community. Uh, what well, it's uh. It's something that I've actually kind of like found throughout the day and you know it's, it's one of the things that's like a little bit newer to the live game it's like the experimental card and then some of the things you're able to do there and try out cool things that look like they've kind of made their way in uh I, I feel like that has been a huge tool for you guys uh for really just kind of testing out you know, the April Fool stuff uh you know Jeff I, I don't know if I can convince you but give me the flying sigma I don't know how that works in the solo <laughs> tank but like give me flying sigma so I can just battle faras and ignore my team but uh a lot of a lot of some of that stuff is really interesting that you guys are able to try with the experimental yeah it's been so powerful I mean I, I feel like 
uh, it's sort of a, a developer dream in a sense to be like, because you're always just like, I don't know, maybe this is kind of cool. Could we just like show this to people and get their impressions? Yeah. Like, we can't really do that. In fact, we've talked about in the past about expanding, maybe even showing more stuff. But um, you know, like, what if we showed like crazy early level layouts that was just all like gray box stuff? Like, how early can we show before it gets like really ridiculous? Where we just like. Here's a, you know, a stick man with a gun. Like, is that just like not even worth giving feedback on or what? But like, um, so it, it's 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 been powerful, and we're still looking at ways to sort of use it. And you know, it's just another great feedback tool to get from the community. Oh, what's so funny? We were talking the other day, and it's like the April Fool's patch was ridiculous. But then when like you saw like some of the communities, like oh, this is kind of cool, and you're just like, wait, no, hold on. Yeah. like, like, like it, we we get Sigma's cool to fly for a day or two, but like we, we can't have that all the time, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh. Yeah, so uh, we see the, the blue team kind of approach the, the final uh, area. And then uh, uh, there was one question actually just about uh, you know, the Overwatch dev team. Like, uh, how has it been, you know, uh, working from home? How large has the team uh, gotten over the last few years? Uh, I feel like it's it's really grown a lot. Um, the, it's that, the work from home is a bit of a mixed bag, you know? Um, and when we first when we first started, we were really worried about how productive the team would be because mm -hmm. it's never something we've, it's something we haven't really done before. Um, and we the team is amazing and they actually like really rallied and I feel like we are um, just as productive as we were before and in some ways, we, we are, are more productive about mm -hmm. certain things, you know? Um, it's it's definitely, there's parts of it that are harder, you know? Like, we don't all have home offices, you know? Like, I'm just, I just work in my bedroom, you know? I just have to make sure I make my bed every day before I, I go on calls. <laughs> um, and then the team, it's um it's really grown. We, we, we um, kind of like when we shipped Overwatch 1, when it launched, we were around 60 to 70 people. And the team has continued to grow um, from there. And I don't think we're at quite 200 yet, but we just, just keep about. growing because this the game that we're making now, Overwatch 2, it's a much bigger game than the original one. It's even a bigger game than, like, even when I started to hear about Overwatch 2, it was like, oh, cool, like, yeah, like, this is gonna, I, I, I want another Overwatch. And then, like, just kind of hearing everything that goes involved with it, with, like, the PvE, and, you know, now all these massive changes to PvP, like, the, the scope of the game is so big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's oh, huge. Yeah. Um, but that's... It's really exciting working on something that has that many aspects to it. And the thing that, that that I like about it, and hopefully what we're showing here today is, is that we're able to work on something that's new, you know, and it has all these exciting elements while still focusing on what like made the original game great. Like we are we are like, hey, love or hate five v five. We are committed to to like keeping the, the PvP of Overwatch as competitive um, as possible, and we are putting so many resources into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just pushing the game forward. It's like all the heroes that you love from Overwatch 1 with the learnings from Overwatch 1 just evolutionize, right? You know, pushing, pushing the game forward, you know, coming up with new kind of creative ways to play. So this this transcendent space sealed the deal here. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Reaper Reaper did his dance on the cart and <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> so, so that that kind of concludes. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'm sure the the devs are going to they'll know who won and lost. Uh, I was not keeping score of the matches. Uh, I'm sure they'll <laughs> I'm sure be they they'll know. be pretty angry that we didn't keep score <laughs> of uh, <laughs> of uh, who, who won and lost, but. Uh, just just a really awesome showcase of the the PvP side of the game today. Uh, you guys could just kind of give uh, one lasting message to like everybody out there who's you know, playing Overwatch One, interested in Overwatch Two, with all these PvP changes today. What would it be? I, I guess I'd one I'd say thank you so much for watching, um, and thank you so much for like the the support and the communication, like the active communication that has been present from our community ever since. Um, even from before Overwatch came out. So one, I'd like to just give a heartfelt thank thank you to, to everyone that's watching and has mm -hmm. been involved in our communities throughout the years. And I also want to let you know that we we are still listening and, and we are still taking feedback on this game. And more than anything, we just want it to be the best version of itself um, 
that it can be. And we're committed to, to making it that we, we come into work every day, um, kind of like passionate and excited to, to work on this game. Um, whether it's, um, some of the, some of the things in hero mode that we're doing for, for the PVE side of the game, or whether it's the, the maps or, or, or heroes that we're working on for the PVP side of the game. So thank you all. Thank you for letting us build this game for all of you because we love doing it. Uh, how about for you, uh, Jeff and Dion? I, I pretty much echo what Aaron said, of course, thanks to the community. I mean, we a lot of this kind of changes, especially all this experimentation uh, and things we've done starting Overwatch 2 was directly getting feedback from the community and hearing what people liked and didn't like, and hopefully that, that, that comes across. Um, also to mention that, um, obviously, I, I think I've thrown it out a lot already, but this is all like pretty early work in progress still. We're still trying a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I mentioned that isn't even in this, so you can see that we're very actively working on this stuff. Um, so if you like see something like, you know, I see Doomfist running around, and, you know, smash people against walls, and I can imagine somebody like, oh, Doomfist is still doing his, you know, stun combo <laughs> kill, but like, you know, I, I suspect we'll be making a lot of changes to him, for example, especially if we do CC changes. So um, it's sort of like the double-edged sword of like being able to show you guys the stuff really early is, you know, some of it's not quite done yet, but um, I think it's it's been awesome to really, um, you know, try to keep communication communication up and letting you guys see what we're working on. Yeah, and I, I echo the same thing. Um, we have a pretty incredible team working on the game, the character team, world building, QA, production, concepting. It's quite a crew. We love playing the game every day, and we look forward to getting it into players' hands soon. Yeah, no, I... Uh... You no, know, obviously, kind of, uh, you know, we're working with you guys on some of the stuff like this, and then some of the other members of the Overwatch team, like your guys' passion to just make this game the best is something that comes through in every conversation. So really excited to see what you guys have uh, in store for the future of the game. Uh, Aaron, what's next? Uh, what can, you know, the, the community look for? I think you guys have an AMA going on. Yep, we have one coming up in just a few days. Um, it's going to be on the, the main Overwatch Reddit. Um, or subreddit, sorry. Um, so tune into that. And um, I think it's the three of us. Don't quote me on that. He's Don't signing remember. up Dion for it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not you guys, you just 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 got signed up. I'll, I'll send the... Uh, uh, you know, Aaron, we'll, let me know. Yes, yeah, we'll someone's going to be there answering questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll send the Outlook <laughs> invites. No, we'll get everybody in here counting again uh, like we did this morning. Uh, no, 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 nothing will be needed for that. But uh, yeah, and then we have uh, Overwatch League. Uh, kicking off again tomorrow. Uh, we'll be discussing a lot of the things that were talked about today here at 11.30 uh, PT. And don't forget, guys, the Overwatch anniversary event is going on right now in game. Some really awesome skins uh, to earn. You can get that combat, uh, you know, uh, the, the new Ana skin, I know, by uh, winning games, or you can just keep losing games constantly and eventually get it just way slower. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for everything today. Uh, truly a blast uh thank you aaron uh jeff and dion that'll be it thank from you. us uh follow play overwatch on all social medias to stay up with all the latest news for overwatch 2 we'll see you next time thanks guys thank you